Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tiki Trail Live. And I guess this week, I really should be saying aloha. Um, you know, with uh, COVID, COVID sucks, man. We've been at this for what, five months now? We can't go anywhere, can't do anything. You got a mask up, you can't travel. Um, the only thing we can do is travel in our minds. And, uh, you know, we don't have to, we can do maskless travel in our minds. Well, most of us can. I think I probably still should do that. But yeah, it's, um, it, it, it's been tough. But we thought, you know, what we all need is a vacation. We all need a getaway. And lo and behold, what fell into our lap is an awesome Hawaiian getaway with a number of folks, all from Hawaii. All our guests tonight are from the islands. Um, and they're coming to us direct from the island, so they're still there. That's pretty awesome. So this is the Hawaiian Getaway Edition of the Tiki Trail Live. I think I got all that in there. Um, that was pretty good. Yeah, thanks, thanks. You'd think I'd have it down after, what do we add, Sam? 22 weeks or something like that now? Um, so tonight's lineup is coming to you from the Big Island. Okay, well, most of it's coming from the Big Island. I, I, I'm the only one who's not on, on the island. Um, and Pono, we got to feel sorry for Pono because he's not on the Big Island. He's on Oahu. But at any rate, so what we've got tonight is um, uh, a Hawaiian getaway like you've never had before. This one is a Kama Aina edition. So if you've been to Hawaii, you know tourists pay one price, and then there's a Kama Aina price that everybody else pays. Well, for the locals. Well, tonight we're getting that local treatment. We're getting some real live uh, from the islands folks and we're getting right down into the dirt. Of so it's gonna be uh, a good experience. And I'm seeing, now that I'm, I'm wondering, um, where is Noah? I haven't seen Noah yet. Noah is here. Oh, there he is, okay. <laughs> You're on page two, okay. So I just want to double check because, you know, when I'm talking about dirt, that took me right to where you're going to be talking. So I wanted to make sure that you were here. Um, so tonight we have Art Deacons from the Kuleana Rum Shack um, Bar. And I'm assuming Art is on here. I have Art. He's our mixologist this evening. He's going to be making the Tiki Trail Mai Tai. I was so ecstatic when it was like, yeah, send me over the drink. What you guys are going to do? We talked about doing a special Mai Tai. With the oh, cool. They sent over the recipe, and it was called the Tiki Trail Mai Tai. Oh, that's awesome. So thank you guys for that. Much, uh, much mahalo to you. Um, and I hope you guys all have your kits ready if you uh, did get your kits. So that's cool. I got mine back here. Well, actually, there's a little story to that, but thank you, Sam. I have one back here. Um, so, uh, hopefully, you've got everything in that kit. Um, big thank you to um, the Tiny Umbrella, who also added a nice little bit of flair for us in their cocktail kit. This and, uh, if you uh, if you uh, purchase some of her stuff, because she's got some really cool umbrellas. And also, thank you to Linda Quirum for your support and coordinating all of those boxes and getting those out to everybody. So everybody give Linda a big hand because she's the one that helped get it from the rum and other manufacturers to your hands. So uh, thank you all for that. I appreciate that. Uh, musical guest, we have Pono, who, you know, these artists, they keep returning to us. I don't know why, but thanks, man. We, we love your music and glad that you're back. Um, thank you. Our featured guests tonight are uh, Noah Kikueva. Did I say it right? Yeah, it was close. Kikueva. <laughs> okay. um, Lincoln. <laughs> I told him I wasn't going to try and say it, but I've got a question after. That's why I figured I got to try and say it. Hopefully not. Uh, we'll go with Noah Lincoln for the rest of the evening, because uh, after I start with a few drinks, and I'm already having issues, because you have a book called Co. And you could have left it at that, but no, you went with an ethnobotanical guide to Hawaiian sugar cane cultivar. <laughs> Dude, I, don't, I have no idea what I just said, and I'm really looking forward to learning more about that. Um, but through our conversations, um, as I've said to a few people, if you think you know where sugar came from, uh, you're wrong. All right. well, well, I'll try to say that 10 times fast at the end of the uh, <laughs> discussion. <laughs> So Noah's going to be doing that for uh, talking to us about sugar tonight. 
Um, Steve Jefferson, founder of Juliano Rum Works, is with us. He's going to be talking about his awesome rum that you guys have already been sneak taking as, as you uh, as you have. Uh, and then Kale Jury, who is one of the founders of Hawaii, Hawaii Hamakua Coast Premium, and uh, he is are uh, the folks that provided the syrup tonight. So these guys make the uh, macadamia nut or jat. Now I'm going to add in that each of our guests tonight are on our app Tiki Comer. Uh, we just came out with a new release on that, an updated release, a new functionality where we're actually pushing promo cards if you for the events like this and for our guests and, and other vendors who have special deals, special offers, we're pushing out promo cards. So we've got <laughs> some wicked feedback there. That wasn't me. Okay. Um, so we have cards for uh noah we've got cards for pono we've got cards for kuleana rum works and for hcp uh and tiny umbrella and with some of these guys it's the that's cool. these guys. it's gonna be the best way to find out where to buy and also there's some cool discounts that uh you can get as well and if you don't have tiki comer go to your favorite app store download it um, it's basically a Tiki app made by Tiki people for Tiki people. So um, definitely get that app. We've just released, like I said, a brand new edition. We've got a couple of new features in it. And for as a bonus. All right, who's racing out there? Uh, as a bonus for tonight, we're going to have, after all of this, a session with Jerry, our technology officer, who's going to be talking about and the new functionality. So stick around for that part, chance to ask any questions, um, get, pro provide your input as well. So we definitely wanna hear that. Um, I think that's about it for my part. Uh, that's the longest intro I've ever done for one of these shows, but we got a lot of cool stuff happening. So before we get into it though, I want to uh, introduce the, the guy who uh, caused, caused all of this to happen. Uh, my partner, Guy, I see you on there. And oh, I like the uh, Thanks, Jeff. I, I, I just quickly, I wanted to offer my special thank you to, to Linda and Linda Quirum and for putting together the boxes and the way that the boxes were put together. So I'm hoping the lucky participants here on the phone uh, make good use of those and are definitely enjoying. And I also want to thank our, our guests, so Steve Jefferson, Kalei, Jury, Noah Lincoln, and Jennifer Craycraft's uh, participation uh, is well in the box. Um, and then lastly, offer, as Jeff alluded to, my inspiration. So I would uh, describe myself as a, a tourist, so a tourist in Tiki and a tourist to the Big Island. However, I've, I've set up a uh, home here on the Big Island for, for the last 90 days, uh, essentially. And it's from that base that I started to recognize the, the richness of the people, the richness of the land, and the, the, the true nature and spirit of, of Aloha. And it's from that in within literally 10 mile radius from my home, that these, these, this ecosystem is brought together for all of us to enjoy today. So uh, my inspiration as to, to why we're here, and I think we've got, I'm, I'm as super excited, and I hope you are as well. Jeff. Awesome, well, thank you very much. And uh, let's see if we can, I'm feeling a little thirsty, and I wanna open my Christmas present. Um, so let's see, where is art? No. Um, let me make you the spotlight video. There you go, bud. So how are you? All right. I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? How's everyone? Pretty good. Great. I'm happy. I'm happy to go to the, the, the chat participants. If anybody's got it on the, the yeah. full screen with all the little screens, there's a lot of people. It's great. Yeah, we got it. We got a few people on this one. So, uh, yeah, better be a good drink. Well, it's also named the Tiki Trail Mai Tai, so it better be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, so do we, does everybody have um, their kids all together? Do we want to, do we want to dive in? Do we, or, uh, 
Yeah. You want to talk about my tie a little bit? Or? Yes, well, I would say let's uh, go ahead and dive in on the mixing because everybody's. I'm going to mix it and come right back. Yeah, everybody's been mixing and wait or waiting. Yeah. So uh, let's get that rocking and rolling. Yeah. Fantastic. I'm thirsty too. So if you have the recipe in front of you, um, there are a couple little things that are, um, as you all know, in Tiki, the, the cocktails are very detailed and, and fine tuned. So um, as we go down, I'll give you some, uh, there might be some adjustments. So just stick with me and do them piece by piece. Um, so the traditional, the yeah. traditional trader mix my time. By the way, Art, you know, um, right, right. I'm going to be, well, well, we're all mixing along with you, but I'm from the remedial oh, no. mixing okay, class and I, I, I'm, I'm very slow with it. So <laughs> I will, uh, I'll probably slow you down, but just wanted to let you know where no you're worries. mixing with you. Yeah, no, it's good. Should have been. Absolutely. And I'll put, I'll make sure I can see everyone. So if anybody's got to raise their hand or questions or anything there. Oh, yeah, yeah, great. There's the, uh, there's the recipe there. Yeah, okay. if you weren't able to get a box, uh, the recipe is in the chat right now. Thanks, Sam. Could have also said featured desk DJ. Just yeah, right on, Sam. Okay. It's redundant. I'm see if I cool, can... yeah. So we'll get who we got there. Okay, go ahead. So we'll get started with, um, so obviously we're going to be using our Kuliana rum. Um, we are using our Nanea rum, which is a blend of three different aged rums, aged from two to four years. Uh, big, big pro for the Nanea. Actually, all of our rums is uh, no added colors, flavor, sugars, or anything like that. Um, the traditional Trader Bix Mai Tai called for Jamaican rum and Martinique rum. So we have something very similar to that. Um, being the Nanea is, um, it's all molasses based. I don't know if I like and, it, when you're sorry. Sorry. No, go ahead. I can't tell if it's a question. No, somebody is uh, uh, going to go, go. I'm going to go do the death march through here and, and see if I can make that happen. So go ahead. No uh, so we've got a blend of three rums from Guadalupe, Guatemala, and El Salvador, um, all molasses based. So that's going to kind of cover your Jamaican style rum. And then we've got our Hawaiian agricole, which is going to help up the, the flavor profile and the esters in the, the, the nanea. And our Hawaiian agricole is obviously made from fresh, fresh sugar cane juice that we grow out in Hobby. Um, and as Noah will tell you, we're using those original varieties of sugar cane. He'll tell you more about it, but um, we're growing all those and using those to make our agricole. So these are two great rums to, um, to substitute for the exact original recipe. So with the Kuliana and Nanea, we're going to do an ounce and a half. And if you don't have a mixing tin, I'm using a three-piece mixing tin. Um, I like to, if I'm doing a single cocktail, use, the, use a mixing tin that would fit one cocktail. Um, if you don't have it, if you've got two plastic cups that stick together, or if you have a blender, you can do it in the blender, put it on low, but with no ice. That works too. So with our Kuliana Hawaiian Agricole, we're going to do one ounce. And you're going to stay that other half an ounce for a tasting later. Yeah, I was just going to say there's extra in there, more than one ounce. So you do have to save that. Yeah, it's hard not to just shoot it right away, right? Yeah, no, it smells good. Yeah. Um, so, I'm a glucose, where's, which backwards, there you go. So, the syrup, the fantastic local syrup from the Big Island, uh, they're using local macadamia nuts. So we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce there. Now, what was, did you already put so in? You know, yeah. Did you already put in the, uh, the Nenea? Yeah, uh, one and a half ounces. Okay, thanks. Oh, I was busy trying to get all the, the muting down. <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> no worries. No so worries. Half ounces on and then one, yeah, one and a half of that. One ounce of the agricole. Yep. And then we do three quarters of an ounce 
Oh, three quarters, okay. Of the syrup. So since we're using uh, a MacNet syrup, uh, you'll see it's a little bit creamier, a little buddy, a little bit more buttery, less on that heavy like almonds, uh, those wood tones are back set. So the, if you've ever had an almond versus a, a mac nut, the mac nut is super buttery and, and it's got that sweetness to it. So you'll notice there's not as much of those wood tones. Um, so next we're gonna do dry curacao. So I really love Pierre Fren. Um, if you want something, if this cocktail turns out to be a little bit too spirit forward for you or a little bit too dry, um, there's a non-alcoholic, the cocktail artist is really a, approachable it's non-alcoholic and really easy to get you can get it in walmart a uh, dear friend of mine as well jane ackrell helped produce this um, but we're going to use the pure friend because i like a boozy my tie so we're going to do a quarter of an ounce there and then for the absinthe so this was the one where I was going to say, on the, on the recipe, it says a quarter of an ounce. So I'm a huge absinthe lover. Um, not everybody likes that star anise flavor so much, um, but I'm crazy about it. So you can go up to a quarter of an ounce. I think the ideal, the ideal spot is probably two bar spoons. So we'll do two bar spoons for this one. Um, if you have a bar spoon, Typically, two bar spoons will give you, just like a standard bar spoon, will give you just shy of a quarter of an ounce. If all I have is Herb Zaint, does that count? Yeah, that will work. Um, it'll be a little bit different. Uh, I really like the St. George absence because it's got yeah. some nice sweetness to it, but Herb Zaint's great, yeah. You might, I bet if you go a full quarter ounce with the Herb Zaint, it'll be it would be pretty starting each forward. So I definitely do like a bar spoon to start with. If you want to up it some more, you could do a second bar spoon. Okay, sweet, awesome, thank you. Yeah, um, okay, and then we've got limes. So I cut some limes. We're gonna do an ounce of fresh pressed lime. And typically you get one ounce out of one one lime. Um, sometimes our local limes here in Hawaii are just hammers, so still want to check it and make sure you strain it. Um, if you don't, you will absolutely, your citrus will be very high. Citrus flavor, that acid. So nice and strained. And then one whole ounce. And so again, just to talk quickly on that original Mai Tai, uh, it was said to have, to be used for, to use a full ounce of lime to every two ounces of rum. Um, obviously we're going a half ounce over that. So I like to up the rum more than anything. When in doubt, add more rum. That's what I was saying. You want to fill, if you have crushed ice, great. I've got some like partially crushed ice, um, cubed ice, any ice will really do. It's roughly a million degrees where I'm at right now. So almost cubed ice is pretty good. Can you give it a good shake? Dude, you're in Hawaii. There's no complaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try Houston. The rest of us are just all there in our minds and on our computer screen, but you're at <laughs> We're about to be here as soon as we take this first step. So you'll notice that nice amber hue. That's another huge thing with a Mai Tai. You've got to hit that, that amber color. We're at the lower end of it, but you can go up to a darker, deeper, like almost an orange amber. Um, but that's a huge point. Uh, the last time I saw uh, Jeff Berry, he was, we had a very long conversation about the colors of Mai Tai. So make sure you, whenever you're making your Mai Tai, however you switch it around, uh, make sure you're hitting that amber color. 
Um, and where's my Angostura? Well, the Angostura bitters here. Just Angostura bitters. So I put it into the dasher. If you're using a big bottle like this, um, or even a small bottle, that dash is going to really come out fast. Um, so that's where they're like four to five dash float. But you just kind of dash, and you'll notice that it kind of kind of replicates that dark rum float that a lot of people associate immediately with a Mai Tai. But for us, it's really going to add a lot of flavor. And then with our fun little umbrellas, I made a little garnish. So just cut a little hole if you like, if you have some mint, cut a little hole in your, in your uh, umbrella. And you drop it right there. And get it to stay, and then we just need our straw. Is over here. Sorry about that. So, Art, tell us a little bit about your background and how long have you been mixing cocktails, and how what brought you to the mai tai? What's affinity for the mai tai. Oh yeah, I mean, man, the mai tai is just—it's definitely king in Hawaii. Um, it, you know, people just. They spend their whole lives waiting to get to their first trip to Hawaii, and all they want to do when they get off the plane is order Mai Tai. Um, I, my career behind the bar has all been on Oahu. Um, I was fortunate, I've been fortunate enough to kind of be um, in the, the, the scene, like right when it was starting, the craft scene in Oahu was starting to happen. So I was helping open a lot of kind of the influential bars here, Pint and Jigger, the Bar Leather Aprons, um, so forth. Um, and then I didn't really believe how much of that Mai Tai hype was around. There is a world uh, Mai Tai competition held on the Big Island each year. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I, I hadn't really competed. I was just, you know, I was just bartending and really learning and I'm, I never, I haven't yet taken the full tiki dive um, where Aloha shirts is all I wear and all I do is tiki. I'm sure that will happen someday soon. Um, well, but yeah, I, I, I did. Aloha shirts, right? Because you're on the island, so. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's true. Every shirt. Um, yeah, so I did, I did that competition in 2016. Uh, it was my first ever competition. I didn't really know what to expect. But I'm a big fan um, of studying all the, the drinks um, that I work with and towards. And uh, I study a lot on the Mai Tai, did a lot of work on it. And I, I won my first competition out there. So that was really fun. Nice. Um, and then just, yeah, I've been making them ever since. Wow. Nice. So the ringer comes in, first competition, nails it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the Mai Tai is really just the perfect uh, vehicle for rum because you can, you know, like we did, we changed little tiny things like the Curacao to the triple sec. You change a little thing like that or the, you know, the, the other rums for our Kuleana rums and you can heighten things um, just with all the little tweaks. It's such a detailed cocktail, but you can, you, there's a million ways to make it. It's so super fun. That kind of blows my mind putting absinthe in there because I'm pretty close to New Orleans, so we get a lot of that. Yeah, can we get a cheers? I'm I would have never anybody. thought to do that. That's amazing. That is really good. Cheers. Ma'am. Cheers. Well, I just want to thank you because not only is this the first Mai Tai I've ever made, this is my first real mixed drink I've ever made. Like that wow. wasn't cake vodka with pineapple juice and grenadine. Oh, you're on your way. I, I like I bought things today. But, you know, nice. I've never I've never owned these things before. Um, thank you so much for the little care package and thank you for doing the Zoom. And I am so fucking excited right now, you don't even know. <laughs> I made a drink with your help. Thank you. Awesome. And this this shit is awesome. This well, shit is awesome. I am really happy to see you uh, on and that you love the cocktail so much. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> like, I even bought a new glass today. I mean, like, like I needed new glasses, but it's really pretty. Nice. <laughs> I'm not sure is on, but I got my uh, my court uh, from Seattle, Washington, Palm Court glass that he gave me. 
for my because it's a Collins glass you suggested, not a Mai Tai glass. What? Yeah. <laughs> you suggest that just out of curiosity. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I uh, it, it, to me it accentuates the the color again, um, and with that that float, it uh, I think it looks more elegant, and it, and it should be. It's a I think it's a you can make an elegant drink. Well, I got to tell you, I was in Hawaii last year. I was on Maui, and uh, we spent the entire time that we were there looking for a decent cocktail. And once I got out of my head that, okay, no, when they call it a Mai Tai, they don't, that's not really a Mai Tai, it was an okay drink. But if I'm going into it thinking it's a Mai Tai and expecting a Mai Tai, it's like, eh, that's not a Mai Tai. This, dude, when I come to Maui the next time, I'm going to call you up and you need to come over and join me. Yeah. You can make me these cocktails. These these are awesome. I you know I've there, yeah. Um, and everybody on this call, you know, feel free to reach out to myself, to Steve, to James, anybody in our team. Uh, we'll set you up at the best bars on any island. Uh, there's a million a million other bartenders that are, you know outstanding on every island now. Now he's got some great bars now. Uh, I don't know when you went, but there's been some major upgrades out there. I lived out in Haiku for a while, so. Well, and, and not to dish on, I'm actually wearing a, a um, South Shore Tiki t-shirt from uh, the Tiki bar in Maui, the only Tiki bar on Maui. Um, they had decent drinks, but I didn't, I didn't try their Mai Tai, I tried some of the others. I'd given up on Mai Tais by then, so. Um, they may make a good one, I'm not sure, but uh, definitely will. Nice. Right. Out for that. And you, like I said, uh, you are at the Kuleana Rum Shack um, is where you're stationed. You're not there currently, but because I understand you guys are under some renovations. Um, when are you guys opening back up? Um, that's a tough question right now. Uh, with, with the current COVID situation, we're, we're kind of hesitant to say exactly when. Um, Maybe the end of November. I feel like James and Steve might come off mute. Maybe not. Well, we'll, I'll follow <laughs> we'll up see. With them later we'll on. see. But, uh, definitely appreciate uh, you stepping in and making this cocktail for us. Um, love the name of it. So when I go to the to the Kuleana Rum Shack, and I walk up and order a Tiki Trail Mai Tai, will it be on the menu? Will, will they know what I'm talking about? They'll, they'll know what it is. It'll be a secret menu. You got. You'll have to do a, <laughs> All a <right>. special dance. <laughs> oh. Carry the recipe. Carry the recipe and just pass it off to them. I want one of these. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's fine. There you go. We're there part of go. the secret menu. That's way cool. I like that. Okay. <laughs> well, that's thank right. you very much. This is a, a fantastic drink. Um, hopefully, everybody had a chance to uh, to make that sunshine. It, uh, what What are your thoughts, man? You are. You were the let me let me unmute. Okay. Well, so first of all, I love that there's an, an agricole in here because I love that additional like burnt and smokiness you get from that kind of rum, um, and it it makes a mai tai more fun. Uh, and I also an ab an am absinthe lover, and I I'm like, have I ever had a mai tai with it? I don't think I have. So why not? I love it. Um, but I tried the absinthe just with the orgeat, just the two together, because I was curious what those two flavors would taste like. That's pretty fun just by oh, itself. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Nice. It's, it's, it's a great recipe. And um, I, I can absolutely see this behind my bar. Right, right next to my other silvers and something I want to keep on hand. I love it. Yes. Oh, and by the way, for the Kuleana rums, uh, it's in the chat session. Um, the, for <clears> those <throat> of you guys that are in California, KL has a special price, has a discount on the um, on the rums. So check that out uh, in the chat. Um, for the rest of you, we're, we're, we're working on it. We'll try and get you uh, access and distribution. And I hear that they're coming to some other states soon. And I'll let um, Steve talk about all of that. Yeah. Um, so I'm not. Gonna, I'm going to hold my ramble you know, for once. And if I, if I, if I could add one thing to there too, if um, for like an insider scoop, we 
make this. What we're using is our is one of our core products. That's our 80 proof uh, Hawaiian rum agricole. Um, we make a 92 proof Hawaiian rum agricole uh, that will be released kind of a, a hidden release. So keep your eye out for that. Follow us online and follow the Instagram and all that. And uh, you you know. You'll have the inside scoop when that comes. It's really delicious, as well as the eighty. But yes, please. <laughs> we will yeah. for that for sure. Um, all right. So let us uh, let's see if we can move forward because I want to have some more of this cocktail. Um, so that means Pono, uh, you and the house. Uh, you know, uh, you there. How you doing, man? Oh. I'm doing good. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? How's everybody doing? Good. Now, now for your session, I am going to hit the, the mute everybody in the world. So you're probably going to have to unmute yourself here in a second. Um, so what, what, I okay. Yeah. Now I need you to unmute, unmute yourself. Nope. You're still muted. You're still muted. Oh no. Okay, so I know I, I know I have two screens. Um, one of them is my iPad and one is, is my iPhone. Uh, okay, I was trying to figure out how to um, connect. I, I had to use two, one so I can hear it and one so I can hear my music in my headphones. So that's why. Well, I had to mute everybody because, you know, we want to make sure we get the music going. We don't want any interference. Right. Um, so you are, you are still in Oahu? I am currently still in Oahu, yes. And you guys are back under quarantine, I hear. We are. Um, that went in effect this past Thursday. Um, the cases were kind of going up again and into the ridiculous numbers. For us, ridiculous number is the triple digits. Because um, the first time when we closed down in March, we were only in the 45s. In, and, and the Big Island is totally different because their cases are very low. Um, but for Oahu, we were at 45 cases average in March we've actually gone up to the 200s to the 300 ranges uh, a day. So that's kind of why we have to shut down again. And it's sad in California, we would, we would really envy those numbers. We envy those numbers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people, um, especially in Hawaii, they think, Oh yeah. Like it's the numbers are bigger everywhere else. It's like, don't you guys realize we're on an Island and there isn't that much people on this Island. So yeah. 300 a day is a lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, that, that makes sense, but uh, yeah. So, all right, man, well, I'll let you take it over. I'm going to shut up and drink and uh, let you play some music. Sweet. Okay, I'm going to just do a little quick sound check. Can everybody hear the ukulele? Can everybody hear the ukulele? Yes. Remember, yeah, everybody hear the ukulele? remember everybody's on mute. <laughs> Perfect. No, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. All right, here we go, y'all. This is a little song um, here on the island. We um, it's on the, it's on repeat. It's a uh, kind of an old classic island song we like to sing. But here we go. It's called Honey Baby. Why 
kissing this while you sway your hips. You just hit me, say, she's my honey baby, my honey baby. She's my honey baby, my honey baby. Tune. That's one of my. Favorites. Thank you, thank you. So, and I, I heard you do a little drop, baby, drop in there at the end. I caught that. Yeah, I like to. Uh, what I like to do is I, I like to put some of the songs together um, that a lot of people don't know that they can put together, and then it just makes for one incredible song because they'll think, "Oh yeah, Honey Baby is a great song," and then they find I put another song in there, and they're like, "Oh my goodness." That's awesome. And then now they like, it's just like one chord progression with like a couple songs in there. Well, it, it's funny. And I've asked people in the Tiki community, you know, we get exotica music in our, in our, on our playlist, people like rockabilly, they like punk. There, there's so many different genres. I rarely ever hear uh, contemporary Hawaiian music being played in, in Tiki bars. My home Tiki bar that we've got a lot of that on there. I, I make sure of that. So thank you for bringing that. I think that's Yeah, you're awesome. welcome. So you got one more for us? I do actually. Um, this one's a really fun one and it's more upbeat. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Okay. All right. Like I want you, you stay with me. 
Like I need to, you say you really love me. Like I love you. Said I just have one question. You come out to Stand up to the early morning, baby, just to watch sunrise. You say you really want me, like I want you. You say you really need me, like I need you. You say you really love me, like I love you. Thank you. Thank you. That is great. Uh, I love your, your style, love your tone. And I, I took you off. You're one of the first artists I've done this to is I took you off uh, spotlight and just had everybody, all the heads. And you can see a lot of the heads were dancing. <laughs> and uh, nice. I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. I got to say too, as I, I was watching as uh, um, they were walking through the, uh, the sugar cane fields, that was a great soundtrack to them walking through the sugar cane. Field. Yes, that was actually. That's, I mean, that's, that's yeah, Island yeah. vibe right there through and through. Absolutely. All right. So yeah, a lot of, obviously a lot of positive comments. Everybody loves your stuff, brother. So we're glad to have you on. Thank you. Glad you come in and, uh, and, and provide us with some beautiful Island music. Yeah, and, and I figured since this was like a more of a Hawaiian themed, I, I wanted to go to the island route, so I kind of did that route. Good, yeah, definitely. And when's when's the CD? When can we buy music from you? I have people asking Ooh. for Venmo details, just to let you know. People want to. Uh, so my Venmo, it's under um, Jordan. So J O R D A N J A C 
B08. I forgot the O. I'm not sure why when I did it, but Jordan Jacob without the O. Um, and then 08. Um, that is, yeah, that's my Venmo. Um, and then if you guys want to find me on Instagram, it's on Pono Music, P-O-N-O, and then Music. And then all of my music is on all streaming platforms, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. And then currently, I am currently working on a five-song EP. Um, that is in the works right now. I actually finished the fifth song uh, a week ago, so I'm just kind of writing right now. And then I'm working with my manager from Nashville, um, I have two managers in Nashville. They kind of like help me with the uh, music tracking and drums because I can't do the drums. Um, Derek Frank, who's the actually the art, artist relations manager for Lani Kaukalelis, who I'm sponsored by. And then um, my other manager, Alicia Hoffman, who's also in Nashville. He's actually Steven Tyler's bandmate. Uh, so he's a really good friend of mine. Nice. Nice. That's some good connections to have. So is there a date for the for the EP? No current date. Um, it just really depends on, because um, I still have to write on a few of them. And then I also have to send it into Mix and Master. But I'm looking at, I mean, if we're looking at a time frame, I'm looking at maybe the next month and a half, maybe two, um, because of COVID. Um, technically, they only put us on a two-week quarantine, a stay-at-home. But they said if the numbers don't go down, we could be in longer. So I'm kind of juggling like I, I do want to work and I want money because I have no gigs. But then again, I wouldn't mind working on music. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of like uh, it's kind of good here and there. So um, I'm, I'm looking at the next two months uh, within a two month time frame. I want to drop this EP. I, I, if, if anything, if I don't have that time frame set, I will drop a single in the next week or two. Okay. Yeah. So. Now, I'm going to ask something, and you, you got to say yes. There's only one answer. It's yes. Can we throw a release party for your CD, for your EP when it's out? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yes, we can. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I will be uh, definitely hitting you up as soon as I'm done with a song or just the EP in general. I will let you know, give you all that information, then we can do a launch party. That would be great. That would be awesome. Definitely want to do that, man. Great stuff. Love your, uh, love what you're doing. Happy and glad you're supporting the show and you're coming on. And uh, Sam is going to post your Venmo. You said that if you could give that to us one more time, we'll get that into the chat. Yes, I will actually put that in the chat. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool, man. Well, thank you very much, brother. And uh, definitely you appreciate you and the music you bring. Thank All you. Right. Appreciate y'all. So now that I've finished off my cocktail, now I have to bring in Noah Lincoln, and I'm not gonna try and your try and use your uh, your middle name because I know I'm gonna mutilate that and somehow offend you. So I'm not gonna do that. There we hey, are. Jeff, Jeff, if I can, this is Steve. In the background, if you guys look at James Dumas's thing as well, they're gonna get started on the juicing. So that's when when Noah's talking here. It actually. It, you can see how the, the sugar cane gets turned into juice. Oh. Yeah, and nobody needs to see my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Noah, I'm prepared for you, man. I am all set. I got my UH hat on. <laughs> nice. No Rainbow Warriors. So, or are they just <laughs> the Warriors these days? I don't know. I, I, but anyway. No, they're not nothing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, sir, you are like the foremost expert on sugar cane. And I've been, uh, with no, definitely, definitely not. <laughs> uh, well, well, um, maybe, okay. maybe Hawaiian sugar canes. Okay. On Hawaiian sugar cane. You wrote the book on it. Um, the, and I literally have, have never, well, no, I've never said it before. Ethno botanical. Um, <laughs> that, so if you can tell us a little bit more about what the book is. Let's start there. And then I want to dive into, um, you know, some of the history, some of the cool stuff that you got. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I'd say over the last 20 years here in Hawaii, um, like a lot of places in the world, there's been a big revival of interest, right. in, in kind of bringing back our heirloom crops, you know, um, varieties of things that that might have gone lost or you know kind of we haven't given them much attention lately 
Um, and again, you see this all over the world, right? Like the revival of blue corns coming out of the Southwest or, you know, heirloom tomato varieties in the Northeast. Um, and so likewise, yeah, there was a big movement here in Hawaii kind of rediscovering a lot of our traditional crops, um, such as taro, sweet potato, um, bananas, um, and sugarcane, which was a native Polynesian crop. Um, so yeah, I got really into the canes and ended up um, kind of having a, a 15 year side project of digging into their history and identification and pulling them out. And so, um, yeah, we recently released a book that, you know, looks at this, um, all these different varieties of sugarcane we had in Hawaii. Um, if I can hold this swim to, oh, my virtual, let me take my virtual background off for a second. Yeah, uh, so you back can on to, uh, not get this weird uh, thing. No? Um, yeah. So this is the, the intro panorama, um, but you can just see the diversity of, of sugar canes that we had in Hawaii, um, all different colors and sizes and shapes and tastes. And uh, yeah, so this is what we were doing was basically researching all these different varieties, um, telling their stories and, and trying to bring them back uh, into the spotlight a little bit. Yeah, and so, you know, talk to us a little bit about how sugarcane got started on Hawaii. And I believe there's a misperception that you can clear up about where sugarcane came from. Yeah, so I mean, of course, everyone knows, you know, Hawaii was a major sugar producer plantation, um, you know, over the last couple hundred years. Um, but, you know, our Polynesian ancestors introduced cane to Hawaii um, about a millennium ago. Uh, so sugarcane actually originates in Papua New Guinea. Um, it's kind of the birthplace of, of what we think of as sugarcane today. And um, that's also the birthplace of the, the Polynesian people. They started sailing out of Papua New Guinea, heading eastward to Samoa, Tonga, Vanuatu, you know, Cook Islands, Marquesas, Tahiti, eventually Hawaii. Um, and they took sugarcane with them along that whole journey. Uh, so yeah, you know, um, almost a thousand years before Europeans um, stumbled upon our little islands, uh, we had a whole um, agricultural system here that sugarcane was a really key part of. Um, so yeah, so, you know, even the, the sugar canes that powered, you know, the new, a new world plantations, you know, in Central South America, um, you know, those all became reliant on, on Polynesian sugar canes. So when, you know, the pirates of the Caribbean were cruising around, um, that's, that's Hawaiian sugar they were drinking and making rum from. So what you're telling me is sugar actually came from the Polynesians to the Caribbean. So we have them to thank for, for the rum and everything else that we do today with sugar. That's, yeah, mostly correct. Um, the diversity of sugar canes came from uh, Hawaii and the Pacific. Okay. Uh, so again, if you go back to Papua New Guinea, you know, 10,000 years ago, sugar cane um, kind of gets developed through their agriculture. And somehow, you know, one variety of sugar cane goes westward um, and goes up through Southeast Asia, through the Middle East and ends up in Europe um, by about the Middle Ages. Uh, but just a single variety, one type of cane gets up there. Um, so when they initially established these sugar colonies, that's what they were growing, this variety they call Creole. Um, but, um, you know, like you know, if you grow one of anything, right, you're kind of open your, opening yourself up for, <laughs> uh, for a disaster. Um, and so, yeah, so when they started venturing into the Pacific, you know, places like Tahiti, Hawaii, Samoa, um, and they suddenly saw hundreds and hundreds of varieties of sugarcane. Um, that was the first big export from the Pacific, was these early Spanish and European explorers um, uh, collecting sugarcanes from these islands and bringing them back to improve the productivity of their uh, sugar colonies. So why is it, I mean, I've, I've read, um, been reading some books and, and whatnot on, on rum, 
And it doesn't really talk about the fact that that's where sugar emanated from. They act like uh, the books I read talk about sugar comes from these Caribbean countries. I mean, why, so why, why is that? Does, does, does Papua New Guinea and the Polynesians, do they have bad PR people? <laughs> I mean, it's the same reasons why tomatoes are Italian, right? Like, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, during that, that, you know, colonial era when Europe was just going around the world, um, you know, they were just, there's a lot of appropriation going on back then, you know, and, and they were collecting things and go, ooh, this is nice, you know, we can make money on this and, and you know, after doing that for several hundred years, right, it, it kind of gets become so synonymous with the culture, you forget where it came from, you know, like I would argue tomatoes in Italy, like tomatoes are such a core part of the Italian cuisine, right, you, you just kind of start to assume that, oh, this is, this must be where tomatoes came from, but no, right. that was a South American crop that, that got transported up there, you know, uh, 500 years ago or so. So now I have to ask you have, um, what, what took you down this path? Well, two part question. One is what took you down this path where you dove into the Hawaiian sugar cane and the Hawaiian, um, agriculture? What, what took you down that path? Uh-huh. Um, well, I was, uh, working at a, a garden at that time, an ethnobotanical garden. Um, There's that and, word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it's the study of people and plants, right? How do we interact and, you know, how do we shape plants? How do plants shape us? Um, and anyway, this garden had just this uh, amazing collection of sugar canes, um, you know, probably about 40 or so different varieties and um yeah i mean it was mostly their their physical appearance that got me you know they're really really uh, a beautiful plant you know um they're they're just you know again if we zoom in on a couple of these little images i mean they're like they're like giant candy canes yeah. oh, <laughs> you yeah. know and you look at them and the the colors and the patterns of these canes it was just like it was just like wow <laughs> you know and um yeah i just thought they were really really cool really striking um you know they they left an impression on me and all i wanted to do was um you know bring a little attention to them so at the garden i'm like all right we'll make them name tags you know so it's not just sugar cane but we'll be like oh this is manulele you know cane and this is halali'i and this is you know just add a little more personality to them and you know went to kind of just make these little name tags, little signs, and uh, learn that, you know, the names were all screwed up, like nobody knew what the hell anything was. Um, there's a whole bunch of conflicting information from different people's collections, and, um, you know, and so, yeah, from there, I'm like, okay, well, you know, we'll dig into the records, and we'll straighten this out, and then, you know, 15 years later, um, you got a book coming out. Yeah, it really just snowballed, and, and you know, was literally what I thought would be a little two-week thing that I would do. Um, yeah, just kind of turned into a rabbit hole, and you keep going deeper and deeper. So I have to ask the question because I was reading in your bio that you kind of got turned on to the agriculture uh, in your childhood with some of the uh, the elders um, there in your community. Mm -hmm. So how does one go from this little island in the Pacific, even though it's a big island, you know, tiny little <laughs> island, halfway around the world to Yale University, um, to and then to Stanford University? I mean, how does that connection happen? Because to me, that that's amazing. I, I love that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Still, <laughs> still asking myself that sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if I said one thing, I would say relationships. You know, like uh, I feel like I've had a lot of great mentors along the way. Um, you know, and people who just yeah, take the time to, to spend with you and cultivate your interest and, you know, give you 
the appropriate appropriate amount of encouragement and criticism. <laughs> um, you know, they can't encourage you too much. You get a big head and you stop working. And if you criticize you too much, you get you know depressed that you can't fucking do anything right. So right. yeah, that that balance of encouragement and and you know hardship, <laughs> I think is is the key. Now, was there any um, anything you picked up while you were up there in the Northeast? Because one of the things I was reading that I didn't know about the uh, the New England area, Boston, was kind of the height of uh, the American rum uh, industry back in the day. So mm -hmm. was there was there a lot of opportunity to dig more into how cane was used then and where it came from? Um, I no, um, yeah, that was you know. So and I did my undergrad. Um, uh, started in 1999. So yeah, that was well before I actually even knew that these sugar canes existed. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I wouldn't have even thought to look back then. Well, that uh, would have been a great opportunity, but uh, mm -hmm. it sounds like you've got a ton of stuff in this book and I'm anxious to see it. And it is coming out uh, the end of this month, correct? Um, yeah, it's actually came in early. Uh, so the US press uh, is, has it up for sale already. Um, but they had already given the release date to like Amazon and stuff like that. So Amazon, I think the release date is yeah, like September 30 or something like that. Uh, but it is here. It's out. Um, just not on Amazon yet. <laughs> yeah, and I saw that we've got the um... Uh, the ability this coming weekend, there's a web sale that UH has, University of Hawaii has. Sorry, Dorian, not University of okay. Houston. Uh, so the, the UH has got a web sale going on and it's on sale this weekend, as a matter of fact. So yeah, we- I was actually gonna ask if we didn't wanna give love to Bezos because he's got plenty already. Where can we order it directly? Yeah, so the, the link is in the chat and I'll repaste it right now. Um, but yeah, you can go direct to the UH Press website and order it there. Um, and yeah, this this sale um, that Jeff just mentioned too, uh, you know, my book will be a tiny bit, bit cheaper. Um, but you know, since this is something that people are obviously passionate about, you know, Hawaiiana and, and stuff like that. Um, they did say like some of their older titles, um, you know, the kind of classic Tiki era stuff actually. Um, some of those things are going to be like 73% off. Um, and it's a, yeah, it's a really big sale. The, the kind of newer books and their more popular books, you know, it's, it's going to be a pretty minimal discount. Um, but they said, yeah, also that for some stuff, it's going to be really substantial. So if you want to kind of go pick up paraphernalia or whatever. Um, yeah, good time to go hop on and do that. Yeah. And it, it's, you know, during our conversations over the last, uh, month with everybody participating here. One of the things that kept coming up is the authenticity of mm -hmm. what we were going to be presenting. And I love the, the fact of, of what you're presenting is so very much authentic. And the group of people that we have on, I know they're very interested in, you know, um, the Polynesian culture, where it came from and the history and, and some of the things that we, we enjoy not being a part of it, but a joy um, distantly or, or not, not connected, but still connected, if you will. Um, you know, so I'm glad to hear that there's gonna be some books like that. And I think definitely you kind of help tie um, some of that in there. I mean, obviously we're all into the, the rum and, the, and the, the cocktails and to understand where that sugar cane actually came from is, is really kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, and Hawaii you would, you know, again, well, not again, but, you know, plants and animals and rocks and everything, right, are, are kind of this kin, kin relationship in Hawaiian culture. Um, you know, you really do uh, anthropomorphize them. You really give them human, you know, attributes. And so what you're talking about, we would call the mo'oku hao, you know, the genealogy of your rum, you know. So not only what was it made of and where was it made, but you know, what was the history that led to that cane being in that press that, you know, spat out your rum agricole. And um, so, yeah, knowing that genealogy um, to me adds a lot of richness, you know, to the whole, the whole experience. Um, oh, 
absolutely, absolutely, 100%. So definitely glad you're able to, to share some of that with us. Um, like I said, we've got the, the links there in the chat room. So um, if you guys have questions, by the way, do feel free to, to jump up and say something. I know I muted people, but you can unmute yourself or put a question in the chat. We're more than happy to do that. Um, even, even if you may be a little bit tipsy, but that's okay. <laughs> so we'd like to know when the book signing is. Um, you know, we actually, uh, um, we got funded to do this or to print the book. We got funded by a, a donor who, you know, her dad used to be a big sugarcane grower and, and manager here in the state. Um, and they gave us a bunch of money to do a big tour when the book comes out and we're gonna, doing workshops on all the islands. And, um, you know, we're going to do sugarcane tasting. And um, a lot of these events are going to be at some of the rum producers like Kuliana. Um, you know, we hope to do one of the events there and hope to couple it with, you know, rum agricole tasting and all this stuff. And it's going to be a grand old time, but we ain't doing shit right now with the whole COVID thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, currently it's postponed um, until uh, future notice. <laughs> find out when future notices. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely, you know, um, keep everyone posted. Um, you know, I'll add Jeff and Art to my, my little mailing list and, and they can pass stuff on from there. Um, oh, absolutely. We definitely want to, we definitely want to be able to help promote the book and, and what you're doing. We've got people on the line who are already ordering, it sounds like, or about to order. Um, and, uh, uh, our tiny umbrella friend is going to wants to come to the big island and, and get the book signed in person at some point. So <laughs> sure. uh, we'd trade her for some tiny umbrellas because they're really cool. <laughs> the signature, because the book is probably more than the umbrellas. <laughs> but, probably probably get a lifetime of umbrellas. In, in yeah, lifetime supply. <laughs> All the umbrellas. <laughs> I don't know. I have, I have two toddlers. They could probably go through a lot of umbrellas really quickly. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Noah. Definitely appreciate it. And I'm going to work on the middle name, man. I'm going to get it <laughs> exactly right because uh, the work effort you put in deserves that kind of respect. So, Jeff? no worries. Jeff. All right. <laughs> Noah. Oh, yes. one more question? So, Noah, this sounds so it, it's mad, maybe. Uh, I'm on a, I, I live and operate a small farm in San Martin, California. And it sounds odd, but thank you for putting the work in. I, I understand it was a rabbit hole. I get it. <laughs> All right. I, I, I fully understand that. But thank you. It, it's not, not a lot of individuals understand the backstory behind a lot of the products that farmers produce. Mm -hmm. And as you well mentioned, sugarcane has a long history with, with humanity. So to be able to shed a, a light on at least a chapter of it is outstanding and awesome so i'm hoping others will, will you know come along and say the same thank you nice man oh, i appreciate that all right that. so yeah. mahalo plenty on that so i'm gonna shut up and give it back to jeff thanks jeff <laughs> <laughs> oh no man it's that's definitely appreciated love having you uh having you guys speak up that's for sure so all right and i don't know i was too enwrapped in in talking to you and um, hearing what you had to say, I forgot to put up the uh, the little banner that we've got. We got your picture up there along with the book. So um, that's the book. Make sure you go to the the UH Press site. Uh, that's University of Hawaii Press site um, that we have in the uh, the chat room there. So all right, next up, you were talking about the genealogy of what's in the bottle, and there's a there's a line in there about a genie in a bottle, but I'm gonna. I haven't quite figured out that joke yet. So once I do, I'll, I'll say it. It'll probably be at three o'clock this morning. Tonight, I'll wake up and it'll hit me. But um, <laughs> in the meantime, so Steve with Kuliana Rum. Steve Jefferson, how are you, my friend? I'm awesome. How are you? Doing great, uh, especially now that I've had some of your rum. You know, nice. it, it's been rough. We've been talking about this for, what, the last month or so. And it's at like, least. oh, I got to get some of this rum. I got to get some of this rum. And I was yeah, finally able to get some a couple weeks ago. But unlike other people on this call, I was going to wait for my Christmas present to not open it early. 
Um, so I'm pretty excited. I've got some hooey hooey here. Um, but you, sir, let's talk more about your rums because one of the things that's come shining through with you is that you are true to the spirit and the flavor of the cane and the sugar and what you're producing. Um, and I told you I likened it to um, what, uh, oh shoot, I just blanked out on the name, the real McCoy, to what they're doing. You know, yep. I think you guys are really the only two that I've heard that you're sticking to that. Yeah, I, yeah, what Jeff is referring to, and I think you guys already know this, what I love is that you're cheeky people, so you're already there. So a lot of the education that usually has to happen, you guys have already done the hard work yourself, so we applaud you. and and Tiki are our favorite people. Um, we spent many hours so what, studying the subject. Yeah, exactly. A lot of hard work went into that, right? Exactly. And uh, uh, so basically what Jeff is referring to is, is, is probably about 90% of the rums sold in the U.S. market has been colored, flavored, and or sugared after it's been produced. Um, and that's in order to make it taste good. Um, and what we're about and what the real McCoy is about and why they name themselves the real McCoy. And there are many other companies that are doing this as well is we're all about making the best possible rum we can and making the rum taste delicious for what it is. So what all rums have in common is they have to be made from sugar cane period. Um, most of it's made from molasses, which is a byproduct of processing out the white sugar, which is the main product that people want. Um, and so that's how that got started. But what my wife and I, for example, it's funny because I was listening to Noah talk about he had no idea what he's getting into. He just wanted to bring a little bit of attention to these beautiful canes. And I was just thinking that's kind of what happened with my wife and I. And it, it seems like that life happens in the small moments when you're not paying attention. And for us, we were sailing around in the Caribbean having a great time trying to avoid the financial crisis, but we were about two years too early. So, but that's all right. Cause we had a great time. And, and, and we were in there in, in Martinique and we went on a little day tour of a sugarcane farm and we heard the realm was pretty good. And so we went up to the top of this volcano and we were really struck with how similar it was to Hawaii and a lot of similarities, almost the same latitude, you know, it's a volcano, it's owned by a first world country, but really it's its own Island nation. And we're just thinking this place is cool. And we, and we entrance to the distillery is through a sugarcane farm. And if you grew up in Hawaii, that's all you saw, especially on the Big Island. We were just surrounded by, you know, hundreds of thousands of acres of sugarcane was just everywhere. And uh, we just tried a little bit of rum and I was floored. So to, to Noah's tomato comment, like also coming from Hawaii, to have a real tomato, an heirloom tomato for the first time in my life, I was probably 35 years old. I was, I was completely blown away. That's how it was trying rum agricole. I'd never had a product like this. Couldn't believe how tasty it was. We looked at each other and well, we got to move back to Hawaii and do this. Um, so we did, we moved back to Hawaii to get it started. And we thought we were going to use the plantation sugar cane. In fact, we were using the plantation sugar cane. We were using the stuff on the side of the road that, you know, the, the sugar cane companies had left about five, 10 years before that. And there was a bunch of cane there. And we started making crazy varieties like we call it the Pe'ekeo Feral or Hamakua Wild, or we're just naming it after these growing regions. And then somebody told us about this guy, Noah, that has some cool canes. And we're like, ah, oh, we're okay. We got enough canes. And they're like, no, 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 you should really talk to this guy, Noah. And so we went and checked him out. And, and just like what he was saying, I was just floored again. It was just like these canes are gorgeous. And, and the story was gorgeous. And if you're from Hawaii, you know, the stories mean a lot. Um, and so... When I heard about all that, then we realized, okay, we've got to make not only the rum agricole that we've already been working on, but we've got to highlight these sugar canes. We've got to bring them back. I was born and raised here. My dad was born and raised here. My kids were. We had no idea that sugar cane was actually a Hawaiian crop. as something, you know, so these 40 varieties that were, were developed over a thousand years. It was just too good of a story. So we pivoted, um, long story short, um, we, we put together a business plan on how we're going to do this. And, and much to our embarrassment, somebody gave it to David Perkins. If any of you guys are whiskey fans, he's the guy that founded High West Distillery. And he's the guy that really sort of made whiskey a pretty famous thing in the early 2000s. Um, and he's largely credited for, you know, being one of the dis dis best distillers on the planet. Somebody gave him the business plan. And uh, 
and and he he came over and wanted to know what we were all about. And long story short, he helped us raise uh, more than ten million dollars to get this distillery going and, and start telling the story. Um, so I'm actually in the distillery now. You can see some of our tanks. The the still that we originally started with is way back there. It's a handmade copper alembic pot still. But we're all about the juice here, and these tanks, those are the fermentation tanks. So I think you saw, if you guys got to see uh, some of the sugarcane being juiced, um, that's what we do. So we have 40 acres, um, and 20 of it are planted in these sugar canes. Um, we use the 40 species that Noah has sort of identified as, as uniquely Hawaiian or very potentially only in Hawaii. Um, so we planted all of those. Um, we juice those, we make the agrifol from it. We recently got 92 points um, score from it. So we're super stoked. Um, we also made another product called Hui Hui, which I think Jeff's the only one who has it. Um, in Hawaiian, Hui Hui means sort of to mix together or better yet, sort of an amalgamation of things. And, and the subtext can be, is, you know, it's, the sum is better than the part kind of a thing. Or this group, you could say, you know, we're Hui Hui, a good mark. Good Mai Tai could be a hui hui or constellation of stars. So what we did is we actually blended a light rum, think like a Bacardi, with our own agricole mm -hmm. and with a little bit of agricole that we got from Martinique. Because we're just trying to make rum awesome. That's our whole mission. Is we want rum to be fantastic and we don't want to rely on, on colored flavors and sugars to make that happen. And we got 94 points on that. And that's from the Beverage Tasting Institute. And that's the highest rated unaged watch white rum that they've ever reviewed um, and they've been doing this since 1981 so we're super stoked on that um, and we also priced it so you know bar programs can sell it for a dollar it's a dollar an ounce or less for, for them um, and then our third product is called Nanea um, and you all have that and that's a blend of three different age ones total took the page out of David Perkins's book how can we make rum even more fantastic than it is first of all it's like John Mayer, if you will, or, or maybe some of you are closer to my age, like Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, he rips on a guitar. Yeah, he's pretty awesome, but isn't he cool when he's with a band? So that's kind of what we did. We identified some exceptional rums, and we picked one as the, as the base, but then we added some body to it, and then we added an accent rum to it, and that's what Nanea is. And so Nanea is, is that color because it's been aged properly in a barrel. There's no caramel coloring. Gold rum. Uh, I guess you guys probably know this is a euphemism for we promise we put caramel coloring and sugar in here. <laughs> and dark rum means we promise we put even more caramel coloring and even more sugar in it. And that's what gold and dark mean. Um, so what we want is we want these canes and the story and the care and the love and all of this stuff to come through in the bottle itself. And so that's what we're really trying to highlight and showcase. Well, this is some really good stuff. And we were promised another tasting uh, because we have a little bit more of the agricole. So if you want to walk us through that, that would be great. Great. So hopefully you guys saved a little bit of that agricole. You didn't pour it all in your Mai Tai. I know I never, I, I'm a sloppy pour and they usually all make it in. <laughs> um, but if you fire that up, um, the first thing you'll get, so, so, one of the big differences about us and about this rum agricole, and, and you guys know about rum agricole because that's sort of the cornerstone of, of Tiki, really. Um, light rum come out at mostly alcohol. Specifically, they come out typically at 94% alcohol. So that means that if you were to measure the liquid that's coming out of the still when they're producing this rum, 94% of it is alcohol. That leaves about 6% of it for the flavor, if you will. And by the time you reduce that to 40% alcohol to serve it, you can do the math and I'm not so good at it, but it's probably around one and a half, two percent flavors left in that bottle. Therefore, you can kind of see why gold comes around. Okay, what are we going to do to make this taste good? Because it's basically one percentage point different than vodka. If it comes out at 95%, you have to call it vodka. So that's why they all stop at 94 so what we do though, when we make our rum agricole is we'll come out somewhere between 55 and 65% alcohol, which means that almost half of what's coming out is the juice itself. So there's a ton of flavor in this. And that's a pretty brave move on our part because if it's not delicious, it's gonna be horrible. Um, and so 
what we're all about is making sure every single part of the process is super yummy. So those canes, when you juice it, that juice itself is fantastic. When we bring it to the distillery and add the yeast to it, and the yeast starts to convert the sugars into alcohol and CO2, at any point, you can sort of sample out of these tanks behind me. And it's this amazing, anywhere from sort of a bubbly juice all the way down to the very end of its cycle, it's like a really good cider. And we could probably sell that. And I did the math. We, I think we'd make about nine times as much profit per gallon of juice than if we converted it into rum. But we got you guys. So we want, <laughs> we want a world-class rum agriculture. So that's, the, that's, you know, don't worry about that. Um, and, and then, oh, I totally lost my train of thought where I was going with that. But the point is, is we're all about the super yummy flavor. We're all about the letting that, because it's delicious, we can afford to have a really low ABV come out of the still. So if you're like me, you're probably getting this really fantastic sort of fruity nose. Um, to me, it tastes like green, or it's, the nose itself is kind of like green banana. Um, not quite a you know yellow banana, not quite sugary one yet. Maybe a little papaya, and I get, Specifically, I get Fuji apple, um, so that's what I get in the nose. And then when you um, when you nose when you nose the rum, what I like to do is open my mouth just a little bit, and that allows the flavors to actually fall on your tongue. Don't breathe any differently, but keep your mouth open. And then try it with your mouth closed, and you'll see there's an enormous difference in that. So if you open your mouth, those flavors hit that ethanol can sort of pass through and then the flavors sort of land and stick on your tongue and, and that's where you get this. So you already know some, something special is happening just by the nose itself. And then for the, for the taste, I get a lot of what we call stone fruits in the industry. You know, those are cherries, but specifically they're kind of more like a Japanese plum to me. And then I don't know how to describe this, so this is my own goofy word, but I get candy corn. Um, you know, those little Halloween candies, and I get a lot of star fruit. Um, so that's pretty intriguing. And then for the finish, I call it everlasting gobstopper because for me, it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever, and it just slowly fades. I guess you guys have all seen Willy Wonka, right? Or am I dating myself some more? Um, all right. So the everlasting <laughs> gobstopper, it's just, and then a little bit of lemongrass, um, and then. So to me, it's just got this really cool finish that just, you know, and the finish is pretty revealing. Here's another secret since we've been revealing all kinds of stuff we're not supposed to. A big giveaway in the spirit world is the quality of the finish will reveal the defect because the yummy stuff can come out and be bold and strong and loud and, 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 and make you feel good. But hang out, it's kind of like the after party, you know, when people actually start to leave then you kind of really get to see the essence of, of what happens. So, so pay attention to finishes um, for any spirit that you're trying. Um, and yeah, so that's our rum agricole. That's pretty good advice. I mean, I'm, as you say that, I'm, I'm going to a lot of the um, craft beers that are out there that try different fruit flavors. And the first time I'm tasting, it's like, oh, that's really good. But on the back end, it starts to get not so good. And about the, you know, you get halfway into the glass, and you're like, yeah, I'm not ordering this ever again. Um, so yeah, I could, but I could see that. And and this is, uh, this is phenomenal. I, I love this agricole, and I know we've got. It's, it's, it's we we kind of cheated a little bit because we we hired this guy named Gilles Cognier, and he's a 30 year veteran in Martinique. And Martinique is where rum agricole comes from, as most of you already know. Um, and he's arguably the world's leading rum agricole expert, um, and. He was the head of distillation and farming operations for more than 30 years for La Monique Distillery. And they just sold to Campari, I think, for umpteen million dollars. Um, but they're part of the AOC over there, which means they're highly regulated by their own rules on how they make rum agricole. And so there's not a lot of latitude for creativity, but this guy's got a couple of tricks up his sleeve. And we were able to sort of not only glean, but have him share those with us and he spent months over here and we'd experiment with things and we come out with some really cool things in order to sort of eke out flavors. So we definitely leaned on one of the best guys in the business in order to, to teach us stuff because, you know, you can spend 
well, the French has spent multi generations working on this. So we're we're starting with that and and taking it from there. But what we really want to offer is, I think what Noah was really getting the heart to is 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 just the the awesomeness of this canes and the uniqueness of the juice and the fact that this plant was designed for a thousand years for human consumption and not for commercial purposes. And so that's what's super exciting for us. Well, I I definitely have some some thoughts on this this rum, but I would love to hear some of my some of the folks that are on the call that I know are flavor people. Um, I know uh, Sunshine, you were already talking about you love agricole, and Dorian, I know mm -hmm. you're very into this. So, or anybody else, I want to hear from you guys. What what are your thoughts? I would say smell it again. And I challenge you not to smell like a raisin box. Like when you open the box of raisins and you kind of give that, give it at that whiff. And when he said Fuji apple, I was like, I'm going to go nectarine. Okay. <laughs> I like it. You, 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 I, you're on to something with the raisin box. Your anchor bias and all of that, because you said Fuji. I'm like, oh, I smell it. And you said gobstopper. I'm like, oh yeah, I get it. And you're talking about raisins. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's. <laughs> but like yeah, I said, it awesome. tastes better than Neeson's and that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is this is some really good agricole. I mean, I've had agricole typically is preceded or followed by funky. <laughs> the word funky right. in there. Right. I don't get funky from this. I have to admit, and I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you offered it first, but one of the design criteria for me is that the word funky would not be something that you that you immediately went to to describe it. If you get some funk, I like a little funk, but I don't want to lead with the funk. I always say, get the funk out of my face. Get the funk. You know, there's, out of my there's face. a James there's a James Brown quote that's just right around the corner here. <laughs> and so many double entendres just <laughs> yeah, waiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, anybody else want to jump in on the agricole? The folks that I know got the uh, the kits. This is um, uh, I see. Well, Brian, you are a maestro behind the bar, as well as you know behind the the pen and everything else you do. Ken, I know you're making some great cocktails. Any thoughts on the uh, the agricole? Yeah, I could have used like oh another eight to twelve ounces of it as I was working <laughs> today. Uh, yeah, I, I was one of the guys who did the early Christmas present. I was sipping it uh, this afternoon, a little bit at my computer while I was working, and got, it's just first sip on. It's, you, you don't even, it's not even for mixing as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, you can, but this is a great sipping rum, and it's a great introductory to people saying, like, well, what's an agricole rum? And uh, if, if you hand them something more traditional, they, they, they do say, oh, that's very funky, that's very grassy. And this is like a little high-end segue into leading them down that path, I think. Yeah, I kind of Great. feel like I'm misleading if you say this is a good entry into agricole rum, because no, this is this is a great agricole, and the rest are. Well, no, it's a great. No, that's what I'm saying. This 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 is fooling people. Yeah. Because they'll say, I really don't like agricole rums. Well, yeah, yeah, you actually do. Maybe you well, should try this one. I mean, that's kind of my point. Well, yeah, no, I was, I was going the other direction. I feel sorry for the person that tries this first. It's like, oh, I love Agricole. And then they go get another Agricole rum, and it's like, what the hell is that? Oh, no, that, that could happen, too. It could backfire on you. <laughs> it's super tasty. I, w I wanted to point something out. I noticed a couple people smelling out of the bottle. It's very different if you smell it from the bottle and, like, let it open up in the glass. It's it's a very different, like, aromatic experience. Oh I'm I and okay. we are big fans of agricole. It's very okay. different in the glass than just smelling it from the bottle. It's super tasty. And for me, like I always feel like I get Spanish olive from like a lot of the like super young agricoles. I get a little bit of it here. Not as like heavy as some of the others, but it's it's super tasty. Easy, easy drinking agricole. So what you're saying is I was having some sort of experience at my desk this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever that was. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> very nice. Uh, a very nice agricole. Man. Yeah. I, so I got yeah. a, I got a segue. No, I, I got a segue for your next. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Noah. 
Oh, I just wanted to, you know, comment that, um, yeah, how, how the role the heirloom canes play here, right? You know, because as Steve said, like 50% of what they're, what's in there when they're done distilling is still the cane juice. And, yeah. um, you know, when you look at our modern sugar canes, like the plantation sugar canes, they weren't breeding for flavor or they weren't even breeding for sugar content. Um, they were breeding for disease resistance and pest uh, resistance. And so they actually bred out um, sugar content. They bred out flavor. And so if you make a rum agricole out of like a modern sugarcane hybrid, it's going to be a totally different beast. You know, again, the difference between a canning tomato and a nice juicy flavorful heirloom tomato, you know. Um, and then each variety is so different. Some of these varieties, you cut them open and they're pure white, you know, really pure sucrose, very little um, mineral content. Other ones you cut open and they're a deep, rich, dark brown um, to start with. And you're pressing out all those flavonoids and secondary compounds and, you know, all this stuff that again, in the, the process Steve guys are doing, those are still in the final product. and. Um, so every one of these canes you use, you're going to end up with a, a different product too, which is a, a, a fun part of the whole thing, right? You know, you're not just making one rum, you could make 40 different rums out of the, the 40 different canes. No, that's a really good, that's a really good point. And, and, and for those of you that are immediately striking onto that business idea, Noah's actually on to So we're actually working with some winemakers right now, and we're going to be coming out with these single origin or single varietal rum agricoles that feature some of these pretty rare and extremely delicious varieties. And, you know, they might be 850 bucks a bottle because we could only do two cases that year. Um, but that's, you know, in order to really take it that far, we're, we're already working on plans like that. Well, I love to see rum being taken into that category of the different tastes. Far too long, it's been viewed as, oh, just throw it in a rum and Coke. And I mean, and I've told many people this, up until three years ago, I hated rum because I, I equated rum with Bacardi. And rum is so much more, so much different, so many more flavors than just what is delivered in a, a Bacardi or a Captain Morgan. Not that there's anything wrong with those. You like those, those are good. And I just can't do Bacardi. I can do some of the others, but um, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see rum going to a place where uh, tequila has gone, where whiskey and bourbons are now going. Uh, I think rum is, is, should follow that as well. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, man. This was um, this was informative and flavorful. Flavorful, yeah. And if you want, I can cue you up. Are we going to Calais next in New York yacht? I believe we are. I got a, I got a little segue for you if you trust me. Uh, uh, well, I think you're going to give it to me anyways, whether I no, 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 no. <laughs> you can always put me on mute. You have the you have the big thumb, so you. I do. I, I can hit that hammer right now. <laughs> No, but I'll say, I mean, you know, because you're all tiki, it's funny because the tiki people actually got it right. Most of us thought sugar was from the Caribbean and the tiki people are like, no, rum is from Polynesia. And there was no real reason to know that. And yet you guys sort of figured it out anyway. And so it turns out you're right. So congratulations. Um, and one of the things that, that created the first Mai Tai was the discovery by uh, Trader Vic of, of, of rum agricole. And it was a unique enough thing that so the story goes, and you guys have heard the story before, but I'm sharing it with you because it was actually my classmate's grandmother. And in seventh grade, she would brag about how her grandmother ordered the first Mai Tai. And I'm like, seventh grade, like, first of all, what's a Mai Tai? Second of all, who cares, right? <laughs> but I heard this story my whole life. And, and, and it was basically her grandmother went over to Trader Vic's bar, probably flirting. She's from Tahiti or has some Tahitian connections. And I could imagine her probably being pretty attractive and Trader Vic's kind of a young guy and he's this mixologist and he makes her up this drink, you know, because he can see that she's from Tahiti. She tries it and she says, uh, uh, you know, my, my ro, uh, or my ro ai, which in um, Tahitian means this is awesome. Um, and I, you know, I can imagine the conversation, probably a little flirting, a little back and forth, and, but she has to go because it turns out she's married. And on the way out, she's like, you know, you really should make this cocktail. He's all like, I think I will. I'm glad you liked it. What did you say when you tried it? And so she said that again, you know, my tight and 
eat, you know, whatever. That's so she writes writes down my tie or my tai to him. He translates it as my tie because he gets rid of the accent mark. And anybody from Hawaii, the the T's become K's over the years when the when the wines were here. So we have the we have a word that we say my kai. Exact same meaning. It means it's awesome or it's all good. And so anyway, so she writes it down and so and so it was named. And so that was from somebody, you know, from here in Hawaii, the classmate that we grew up with, that actually ordered the first Mai Tai. And the thing that makes the Mai Tai that most people don't realize is it's not fruit juice, right? It's right. this orjat syrup. And the orjat syrup is this great, well, first of all, it's from agricole, right? We got to say that. But second of all, it's this orjat syrup. And, and orjat is this fantastic liquid, the elixir of the gods, I like to call it, that's typically made from, from, from almonds. And I'll just sort of leave it at that, and you can take it from there. Yeah, well, that is a definitely great segue because we are going on to the syrups next. So thank you, Steve. Definitely appreciate you coming on. Love. Thank the you all. Um, I'm excited to uh, to to get some more. So uh, KNL has that discount that's available for folks in California, and I know Steve, you're in other states correct? Yeah. Yeah. We're in uh, California, Washington, Arizona, Nevada, Hawaii, of course. We're just about to open up Texas and we're just about to open up Utah. Um, so yeah, we're, we're on our way. Um, and many of these shippers, if you go to our website, a lot of the people um, can ship to you um, depending on what state you live in. If you live in Utah, it's a felony, so don't do it from there. But most of the other states, Texas is dodgy, right? During so at any rate, yeah. go to the website and you can you see how you can order it. I didn't hear that. You're kind of muted there, Dorian. I thought I unmuted. I'm sorry. No, no, you're mute, muted, not silent. It was it sounded muffled. There we go. That was the word. So yeah, so this is uh, this is great. And any of you guys that are not in one of those states, if you hit me up and are willing to pay me enough money, I may go ahead and order some for you and bring it out to you. Yeah, I want to break out of this quarantine, man. <laughs> I want to go somewhere. Jeff, right. Jeff. Yeah, yeah, you know, I have to apologize. I forgot Colorado. Colorado is a big state for us, surprisingly enough. So, Colorado as well. Nice. Was that you, Jerry, that spoke up? No, that was me begging you to come to South Bend with rum. Oh, there you are. The <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. Oh, believe me, I've been getting text messages all week about uh, what I was doing a year ago, two years ago, three years ago this week. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm a big Notre Dame football fan, and this would be normally their home opener, and I would be in South Bend, but uh, I'm not. So, but yeah, I was supposed to come there. I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do, Ken. All right. Thank you very much, Steve, for joining us. And let's move over to Kalei. You've been waiting so patiently. See, I kept trying to tell you guys, you know, yeah, we can plan for an hour, but shit happens, man. Having a blast. We have fun. We're just chit-chatting and, yeah. From the NAS, so I'm good. <laughs> and, dude, dude, really? Yeah, yeah. This is freaking phenomenal. Oh, thank you. I, I don't know if you saw some of the, the comments in the chat. Um, people love this syrup. We've had a couple of other syrups online uh, with us before. And what I know is you guys just started this recently and you're yeah. already at this level. You're kicking ass, man. Yeah, well, we have a lot of people to thank, you know? I mean, all of you guys, so the start for sure. So tell us a little bit about your background and how you got HCP started. And it's Hamakua Coast yep. Premium uh, Syrup. So I always have to throw syrups in there because I want to make sure people know that that's what you're getting is the syrup. So right. Right. But Hamakua, Hamakua Coast Premium. Yep, yep. correct. Um, so my business partner and I, Brandon Ventura, he's not here. He had to work today. But um, we've been bartending for 15 plus years and uh, up and down the resorts over here. And, you know, as you said, you go to Maui and you 
have this expectation of a cocktail of a Mai Tai and you go and they're so just watered down you get something with crap ingredients, you know, and you taste that. Yeah. As Bart said, you get that very sh uh, sharp uh, flavor from like an almond or jat compared to this kind of a creamy, nutty, uh, warm macadamia nut or jat. Right. Uh, so that was our thing. Uh, we, 2018, September, uh, we came up with the idea kind of just do our own macadamia or jat. Um, his family owns acres of mac nuts. So we thought, hey, why the heck not? You know, if you can make it out of almonds, um, try it out of mac nuts. And it came out great, but it would be better. So as time went on, um, I think we got ourselves a pretty good product. And I thank you guys for enjoying it. Yeah, this is absolutely phenomenal. I, one of the um, the syrups, I was talking to them and I said, man, the syrup tastes so good. Every time I go by the refrigerator, I just want to take a, a hit of just the syrup because it tastes so dang good. Um, this blows that away even. I mean, you, you've done it. How did you come from, you guys are, are slinging drinks, you're behind the bar, you're mixing stuff, and you're going, this is crap, there can be better. How did you make that giant leap to creating something that's so much better? Uh, well, you know, we, we get a lot of free time during the day as bartenders that work at night. So uh, we sleep till about noon <laughs> and uh, wake up and, you know, it's either you start drinking again or you just kill time. So we decided let's just start drinking again and making, <laughs> making <laughs> stuff. And we came up with the uh, Orjat and we, we ran it through a bunch of tests, sent it out to the lab um and came out with the final product we what we do is we make it more of a of a milk we steep and then we milk so that's kind of what the difference is all right so that's your secret to uh to creating the mac one of them, yeah i can't tell you all of them. well yeah no you don't have to tell us all of them you just <laughs> be able to tell us where we can get more because dude you were like a crack dealer now i i'm categorizing you as a crack dealer you gave me a taste and i'm gonna be like dying until i can get some more of this well, I'm glad you asked. Um, today, our online shop went live. So um, we've got a sample pack. It'll come with um, four eight ounce bottles of all of our current products. Um, we've got a Lily Koi, an Ube, which is a purple yam, Filipino purple yam, and also the macadamia orjat, and then a rich clear one simple syrup. So all everything is all local. Um, we get all of our fruits from the farmers markets, uh, from the farms, the mac nuts from our from the family farm and everything like that. So. so yeah, yours is coming all from local farm sourced ingredients as well, correct? Correct. Yeah, that's what I love about what you guys are doing. And it seems like obviously you're a good pairing with Kuliana because you guys are true to what what the local uh, agriculture is delivering and you're providing that taste. Yeah, and I also want to say thanks um, for the whole background on the, uh, the sugar, the sugar cane and its history. Um, growing up in Hawaii, that's one of my best memories of my grandpa was he took us riding and we just sit in the back of the truck and start chopping some sugar cane. He just sit there as a kid and just chew on some sugar cane as a kid. So really cool. Well, hey, I, I remember as a tourist, maybe even as late as last year. Um, getting sugar cane and just chewing on the sugar cane. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Good memories for sure. Okay, so I got to back up for a second because I saw Linda had shown me a picture of uh, a, a drink that was so amazing looking because it was purple. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. And then she still told me what it was. And then you just mentioned it. Yeah, the ube. I mean, it's like, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Dude, can you explain this whole yam thing? Because yeah, so ube is a purple yam. Um, a lot of people think that it's a sweet potato. Um, sweet potatoes are grown underground. Uh, ube is on a vine. Okay. So it's really popular between the Filipino community and a lot of the locals here. It's more of a Filipino um, yam is what it's called. So we, yeah, we decided that, so they make, it's come called a halo halo. And halo halo is is the ice cream, coconut, and ube. So I decided to grab that ube and make it into a syrup. 
Yeah, that. So what's what's the taste? Because as soon as I hear you know potato or yam, I'm, I'm, my mind heads in a different direction than what would be good in a cocktail. So what's that taste profile? Uh, very nutty, actually. Really? Okay. But yeah, yeah. Very nutty, very creamy. Um, not quite as creamy as the orgeat would be, um, but this is definitely, uh, it'll come in that sample pack that you ordered. <laughs> I was just going to ask that. That's going to be in the sample pack, right? Okay, good. <laughs> Good. Hey, you're, you're doing a good job, man. You, you're a good salesman. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the other one that I'm really excited about is Lilikoi. Yep. Because that I did experience last year on, on Maui. And once I got past, okay, no, this is really not a Mai Tai, but it's a damn good drink. I'm taking my mind away from Mai Tai mm -hmm. and just enjoying the drink for what it is. And it was uh, a Mai Tai with Lilikoi uh, in it. And that was phenomenal. Yeah, it's a uh, passion fruit as some of you would probably be more familiar with. So in Hawaii, we call it a lily koi. It goes on a vine, about yay big, um, has seeds in it. You need all the seeds and everything if you want. So is that the same passion fruit that we have here on the mainland or is it different? Oh yeah, well this one is almost the same, but it's a lot better. <laughs> I was referring to the fruit, not the, <laughs> the syrup is. I got that. <laughs> Pretty similar, yeah. Pretty. I'm sure it's it's around. It's part of the same family. So, all right. Well, I am definitely looking forward to seeing that. And you guys got your site up uh, this morning, right? Yes. And and was there? Um, I believe there was a. And what's the price on that? What were you, what are we doing on that? Sample uh, so pack? for the well for the sample pack, it's going to be fifty, and that'll come with the four bottles, four eight ounce bottles. And then um, the shipping, it depends on where you're at. I think to the mainland, anywhere in the mainland is 16 bucks, and that'll be USPS priority. And then if you're in Hawaii, it'll be 11, I want to say. So, um, yeah, somebody has said, oh, Art has, was making uh, the comment that it's perfect with coconut and a pina colada because of the earthy tone and it subdues the coconut sweetness. Yeah, yeah, we've got um, a few accounts that do um, ube daiquiris, ube pina coladas, uh, like that. so it's real, real good in tropical cocktails, desserts. Um, on, uh, I've had people you make bao buns out of it, fresh pastas. Oh, wow, the bao buns are here. Really yeah, so there's a lot of, not just for cocktails, but Break it up <laughs> for any concoction or any yeah. any um, culinary crafting that you may do. Definitely. <laughs> nice. So so what's next? Because you guys you guys just got started, right? I mean, during the pandemic. Uh well, we well got serious and launched. Yeah, we officially became a company in January of 2019. Okay. The whole number and all that you know that jazz. Um, but didn't fully kick it off until I want to say late last year. We started to get our brand together, you know, get our logo, we'll get everything like that, packaging right. Mm -hmm. Website, yeah. So it's been it's been about about a year and a half. So yeah, very, very fresh, very new. Um, still very hungry. Uh, still very thankful to all of you guys. Uh, we get great support on social media from all of you. So that's super cool. I really do appreciate that. And uh, Russ, I totally lost my so, so Are you looking to get into distribution to expand uh, more into the mainland? Uh, well, we were gonna work with one of the distributors here, um, Southern Wine and Glazers. But once COVID hit, everything just kind of took a shit, so. Yeah. Damn COVID, it messed up one more thing we can't get now. That's all right. We got an online store, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And I got to tell you, like I said, this is, uh, this is good. This is seriously, this is crack. Crack in a bottle that I now, I need to order more. I'm going to be going online and, and ordering more without a doubt. Yeah, it's funny. I got a funny story. Uh, my girlfriend, uh, she's, she's got two kids, you know, well, and I, it's mine now, you know, and uh, when we first got together, um, the kids were wondering, you know, what do you do? What do you do for work? 
And uh, I said, well, I, I own a syrup company. And they said, wait, what? Wait, what? Like a syrup company? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you Mrs. Butterworth? Huh? <laughs> Are you Mrs. Butterworth? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. And, uh, you know, I gave them a little taste of that Mac nut. And every single morning, they're like, can I get something different? You know, give me this, give me that. So <laughs> I got to, I gotta, you know, limit them, though. So not too much. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh Oh, somebody had put in the uh, the chat, the Merriman's Lilikoi Foam Mai Tai. Yes, I believe that's what I had. Yeah, there's some good stuff out there. Yeah, I, I have no idea how to make that, but that was a really good cocktail. And um, I'm definitely going to be ordering uh, some of the syrups, so hopefully we can get those uh, those soon. Um, definitely appreciate you coming on, man, and, and waiting for, for so long. Uh, apologies for, for us going so long, but... You know, that's Steve. He just talks and talks and talks. Oh, shoot, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, I like talking with Steve. Steve's hilarious. Oh, no, Steve is great. I mean, talking with all you guys going into this for the last few weeks, I knew this was going to be a great show. The people are really going to love this. And I knew how much you guys were all saying, oh, make it into an hour. I'm going, okay, yeah, whatever. It's not going to happen <laughs> because just natural stuff happens. And, I, you know, we're, we're having good conversations. You guys are telling a good story. Um, and I've got folks now on the, let me take you off of that. Oh, where did, well, there, now let me take you off of, yeah. See, my, my fingers aren't working. Steve, that, that rum, it's doing its job. Uh, there we go. There it is. Now I got it. Don't blame the rum, Jeff. Don't blame the rum. <laughs> I, I got to blame somebody. Everybody knows who it is, really, what the what the real reason is. You know, that, I got that. Um, so, uh, what would you guys think? Delicious syrup. Very good, huh? That, that macadamia nut is... Yeah, I love the syrup. I wish we could just get that by itself and not have to get the whole pack. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, you're starting. One day, one day. Where are you located? Where are you located? We'll come in. Uh, we'll come stop up there and sell to your local liquor store. Huh? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in California, Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, even better. I love it. Yeah. There. Perfect. Well, Brenda, you get that pack. Take out the macadamia nut and send the rest to me. I'm okay. <laughs> okay, I'll charge you the all the extra shipping that it's going to cost me. <laughs> A traditional method of workshop just with macadamia nuts, right? Yes. <laughs> I wasn't in the room. <laughs> Do a little bit of orange blossom water just for that essence. Yeah, we made one cocktail without the absinthe, and the macadamia nut flavor really comes through on that. It's really good. I think we like it better that way. Yeah. I want to try that. Dang it. So next time you're in South Carolina, you can sell some of the syrup to our uh, local liquor store. Hey, all right. <laughs> we'll just get distribution with Total Wine. We'll find it. My grandpa lives there, so I'm, I'll, I'll oh, be there. Oh, hey, great. <laughs> Where? Uh, Raleigh. Okay. Oh, oh, North Carolina. Okay. Uh, that's like, what? Four hours. Four hours, hours from us, yeah. A little bit farther north. Yeah. Yeah. If you get into, into North Carolina, we can get it. If, if you're from Hawaii, all the Carolinas are the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> And that rum is delicious too. I really like that. Yeah, that good. Really good. Uh, this, was, this was good stuff. So hopefully you guys had a chance to, uh, with the packet, with the, the um, kit that you were able to try everything, get that. But otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll, like I said, we've got the listing of where you can get both the rums and the uh, the syrups. Uh, yeah. Hey, Jen. Yes. Hey Jeff, it's Jen. Hey uh, Jen. Hi from Cheeky Problems. We just want to thank everybody for telling us all their stories and we really enjoyed the rum tasting and thought that um, the orja was delicious and loved the agri call. So thank you so much for putting together such a good show. It's like it's always really well planned out and I love that um, everybody gets their turn. So thank you, Jeff. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for uh, participating. I love that you're, that you guys are on. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And Jen, yeah. you're not at the beach this week, are you? 
Uh, no, not this time. So um, I yeah. had to rush home from work and sort of seek you out so I could be here. <laughs> yeah, so all of us that have backgrounds that are a beach, Jen and Ryan were actually literally at the beach. That was that was cruel and unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, but it was really awesome for us. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Glad you're here. And I'm going oh, to the photo was awesome, Jeff. He's great. What's that? Pono, he was wonderful. Oh yeah, no, he's done it. He's done so great. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's good. Uh, the the I love the fact that the music kind of all connects to the to the phone, and there's no technical issues. Um, uh, but even that aside, I mean, the music is is phenomenal. He gives a great vibe. So yeah, when he's we great. About doing <clears> this band, I said, no, I've I've got the the musical artist that will do. I know who we've got. So yeah, he's great. And uh, Jen, the. Yeah. Time Umbrella Jen. That's me. My, yes. my neighbor Jen. How are you? My neighbor. Good. Yeah. I'm so excited. I just ordered two of the rums and the cocktail kit of the syrups. I'm so excited to try them. I'm like so jealous because I, ha I haven't tried either one. So I'm so excited. I just ordered them. Yeah, they are. Uh, you will not be disappointed. I can Yay. tell. You that. All right. So we got one other uh, individual we're going to have on. He's the he's the Terminator in the middle of my screen, the French Terminator, um, um, <laughs> Monsieur Terry Hubert. Hey, Did bonjour. Terry? <laughs> How you doing? Good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So sorry for the glasses. It's because I'm actually at the beach, right? but really for real, but it's dark. I actually escaped Dallas this morning to come to Florida. So I put that little light in front of me so that the, I wouldn't mess up with the background, but my eyes are, are hurting. So the LED is like right on me. But we're gonna talk about the Tiki Comer app. So I don't know how many of you have already downloaded it, but I'm just sending right now on the chat the uh, Tiki Comer app links for Google Play and the App Store. We've made some updates to it. Uh, so this is a garage shop operation, guys, right? So we actually have got it on two platforms. We've had it out for about a year. We're getting feedback and we're, we're gonna show you some of the new features. Now, Jeff, can you uh, throw this so I can share my screen so I can show the application in action? Um, and uh, when, you look at the, um, when you look at the text that I just put to everyone, there's a Shaka code for the event. Uh, you'll, you'll know how to do that. So, if, so some of you have the app, when you go Shaka by code, if you put C61A, you will actually get the card, the event card for the show. Okay? Uh, you so, should share your screen, Terry. Eight or eight. You got it? All right, cool. All right, let me share screen. It was that, can you give that card number again? Yeah, I will. It's actually on the chat. Oh, C one A Alpha is that last uh, that last character. Right. So, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, it's so cool. It's oh my A. I can do my phone via the. Uh, just via the <laughs> awesome. Because I did a recording. For those of you that have not met Terry, he is our chief technologist. He is our chief technologist. He is the guy who is leading this charge, um, okay. taking our crazy ideas on what we're looking and trying to do and puts them into reality. Do you guys see my phone screen? Uh, we do. And a big orange desktop with uh, part oh, of no, the- I don't want you to see that. That's not the part. <laughs> Am I sharing my phone? And the, uh, no, not the phone. Oh, that's weird. Because it oh, asks no, me to share my it, phone via cable. The phone if it's, if uh, we're seeing the search. See, it look like the search. Let me see. Oh, you're seeing the search on my phone. So it is working. That's awesome. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, let me see. iPad, iPhone via cable, iPhone via cable. Yeah, let's do that. Share. Okay. So one of the things that we've been working on, um, you know, what a time to bring out an app that's designed around social engagement, um, uh, for meeting and interacting and, and tapping each, each other. That doesn't sound right. Um, that doesn't sound right. So do you see my screen? Do you see, do you see your Tiki collection? Uh, nope. We're still seeing your, um, the search. Okay. All right. Never mind. Let me, let me put it the other way because it's <laughs> supposed to, okay. Uh, resume share. Okay. What do you see so, now? 
We spent an X and a C. <laughs> I know. What do you see now? An X and a C. <laughs> X and a C. Okay, forget oh. that. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna try to be fancy with this one. I'm going to show my screen. There we go. Bam. Okay, so you see my screen. People. Yeah, you see my screen. Uh, I see. We see that search again. Okay, perfect. That's brilliant. So we'll see that. Okay, yep. so look at the search. Okay, so the Tiki Koma app. So let me give you a little bit of a background here. So the whole concept of the app is to actually create an environment where we can collect cards and where we can connect with each other and connect with the things we love in Tiki, number one. So this is really unlike a lot of other uh, community app, like social media app, where you can follow people. You've got, this has got to be for real. So I'll, show you, I'll share with you like, a recording I did of my account, okay? So over here, what you see is my Tiki collection. So once you register in the app, and you create your own card, you'll see different categories of cards like explorers, drinks, venue, treasures, events, and promos. And below that over here, you're gonna be able to see this is the deck and this is my, these are the different options that I have where I can, for example, look at my collections, you know, my, my timeline, my, key, my Tiki trail, literally, Shaka, yes. how I actually collect the cards, and the leaderboard and settings. So let me just show you a few features over here. So this is actually really a cool app because you're really the, the whole concept behind it is contact. So if you look at the promos over here, I've got two promos, Tiki, the tiny umbrella and co-books that we talked today and undiscovered promo. If I look at the tiny umbrella and I flip the card, I can get to the tiny, I have information about it. This is a promo card. So you have the, you have the code, you can go directly to the website and engage and, and actually go ahead and buy some of the tiny umbrellas, right? And come back, tiny thank you was the code. So this is a card that everybody's gonna get, right? And some of you already have the app, you already have it. Same thing with Co. I can look at his book and I can go to his website at his book, okay? So I don't know. We have a mute thing, um, Jeff. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Who was that? Well, somebody, somebody playing music box. His phone's ringing. Let me see. Oh. Is that your phone? Find the culprit. What are you looking at me for? That's your phone. What are we looking at? Cuts. All right. <laughs> I was gone. I didn't. So tell me, where, whoever has a phone, can you mute? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Okay, thanks, man. So, so here we go. So now I'm going back to my deck. So I see all my decks. So I have my promo here. I'm looking at my Tiki Trail. Today, I got the, t the Tiny Umbrella Co. and I've got the Tiki Trail Live Show. These are certified. And you'll see more of those as we move along. And it gives me a list, basically, of all the events, all the Tiki events and places. So this is a promo. This over here shows a particular uh, event. This is a person. Uh, Kelly, uh, these are artifacts that I've collected. This is a golden tiki. This is a place I've been to. And I'm, I've got the ability with this application to also look at it from the map perspective. So here are all my little treasures or my cards I've collected. If I go to Dallas over here, you'll see I'll go to Arlington. And I know that we have somebody from the Four Kahunas on tonight. And I can go over here to the Four Kahunas and they're filling you know, I was uh, looking at this person, we Shakad, and here is Miss Shell, which is one of the little artifacts that they have. And if I click over here on the two feet, I see who owns it. And that's JP, who's the owner of the Four Kahunas. Which is, and then I can see what type of cards or gem he has. And these are the treasures that are actually assigned to his account that I can discover. And the fun thing is that how do I discover them? Well, I can go to the bar and then I can literally use my phone and shaka with the items and shaka with people, and I'll show you that very quickly. So then I can go back and see my little tiki trail from all around the world. I can see I've been five places in Hawaii, or five connections, five shakas I've made in Hawaii, and so on, and I've got one in London as well. So it's kind of fun you see this. The other one, oh. so I look at my tiki trail, I can see all the stuff I've I done over the years, right? Yeah. So this, I can trace it back and look at a card. And here we are, this guy. I used everything I he have calls him Sniff Tiki Diver. And somebody's got a mic on. <laughs> so Tiki Diver, we recognize Jeff over here. I flipped the card. I can see some information about him. 
That's and a cool the whole concept is this, the reason why I have the car, yeah, it's, well, it's the only reason is because we've shot out together, right? So over here, if I'm looking at my leaderboard, I can say, well, show me just the explorers. And then I can see that Tiki Diver is number one, I'm number two, uh, Mod Tiki is number three, and I can look at all the other people around the world who've ranked, and that's based on how many times you've shot and how many cards you've collected. So we're improving on this, right? And we always need your feedback for that. But if you look at my explorers, these are the people I've shot out with, right? So these are people where we are sitting at the bar or we're going to an event and we decide to, to connect and here's how we connect. So if you look at this, oops, sorry. You can shock out over here. Oh, somebody did this, right? So I can shock out by check-in. If I go in a bar by code, that's my code. I would enter their code. And when we shock out, the system would exchange our cards or by scanning. That's a really cool way of doing it. It's writing on my screen. Yeah. So this, no. this is, anyway, so by scanning. So this is my card. Who's writing? You're writing on it? Somebody's yeah, having fun messing me. around with my screen. All right, that's, that's cool. Me. I'm not even touching it. Doesn't matter. It's, yeah, it's okay. So here, when, when I hit on settings over here, right, my card shows up and I can add cards. I can add drinks. I can add, but it does, if I'm not discoverable all of these cards that you create while well, they have you have to be near the person or the, the object to shock out with them so over here as i move on you'll see i'll just show you this so the i've got the deck right i can show my deck i can can create the card but i really want you to think about we need help there's a support line where you can actually send us an email and then give us some feedback on the application right so we, and there were some really cool new features I'll talk to you about. Like over here, we've got the event, so that's today's event. So when you have an event like this one, and you flip the card, you'll see that it tells you what your event's about, and you've got the recipe of the, of actually what happened. The, or of the, yeah. You're, you're running a little bit behind on the, Hearing? Screen, on the screen. So we're just now starting to see the event. Oh, crap. Okay. Oh, are you kidding me? Now we see oh, the somebody's having fun writing on this stuff. Okay. Oh, what you're doing, well, right over our screen. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Somebody is doing this on my screen. Somebody's having fun. I don't know. You're not putting enough control in this damn place. Come on. <laughs> so, hey, it's all about control until you showed up. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, right. So, so you put the app in there, right? And then you can you, you get the general idea. So really think of it as collecting and when you use the shaka feature over here you get one-on-one -on -one. now some cards are not okay so this is it's the cool part when you look at these cards that you have it's really because you were face to face with somebody or you were on site or the promo like right now we push a promo to everyone the promo also gets assigned so you cannot like collect things that you have no that you have not worked for or you haven't met somebody for or you don't have bragging rights uh you know other other than the, if you can't show that you were there so when i go to 16 venues i went to 16 tiki bars and it tracks when i went there and i've got a card for every single one of them so there's other features when you open the app, you can scroll to the venues you have and it shows you the venues nearby. So the bars that are near you or the treasures that are near you and you can basically click on the little pineapple. Let me uh, stop the screen share, I'll go back up. So you click on the little pineapple and the little pineapple will allow you to, to, to basically say, I'd like to go there and see it. Now we're gonna add new feature to this. When you have a card, you'll be able to have another facet of the card where you can send message to people so that your card can actually be enriched with data, with information. And if you need to change the card, we can, you can change the card as well. You can change the picture, what it says, and it shows like that on everybody's deck that collected it with you, okay? So that's the general idea of Tiki Commerce. So it's really designed for us in our spirit of you know, doing our trail, going out there, visiting bars, meeting people. We're creating community, and as we improve the application, you'll be able to do your leaderboard with your with your uh, tribe if you want, right? Or you'll be able to around your bar, your bartenders. You know, they'll be able to put behind their card new message. You'll be notified 
that something new is happening, or maybe a special on Thursday. So you'll be able to, because you've made contact with them, you'll be able to be informed. And those cards basically rank your leaderboard accomplishment. And then there can be promotions that are associated, associated with gaining up on the leaderboard. That's the general idea. You go in, you play with it. If you go into gear and you say need help, it sends an email. We receive it. We'll improve the app. We're accelerating on the features right now, but it's pretty cool. So that's what we have as a uh, Tiki Koma app. So we have we had a lot of fun building it. Do you have any questions or anything you, you want to, uh, to ask me? So in a nutshell, if you haven't been on the app, and I see a lot of you in the chat say, like, thank you, Chris, for being on it from the very beginning. I know you were there right from the start. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Giving us feedback, so I appreciate that. Um, really, this app is about helping. Uh, we all love to, to uh, collect things, and we love to talk about the things we collected. And this really helps people share their Tiki experience. Um, uh, Tiki Triangle, we met up with him in uh, New York, and we're able to exchange some cards. And and we've got I've got the Tiki Triangle book card. I've had that since, uh, what, for a long time now. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Wow. Uh, those are just different ways that you can um, share what your experience has been. There's been times where um, I've been uh, out with somebody and we're talking about best drinks or worst drinks. And I'm not going to say which one I pull up, but I'm like, oh my gosh, here's my worst drink. I pull it up and show them the exact drinks. Yeah, and I start talking about it. So it's kind of cool that you're able to share visually and you can collect stuff and so that's what the whole idea is behind this. And as, as Terry was pointing out, we've added some things in that adds value, especially now when we can't go out to the bar and we shouldn't be, you know, tapping, uh, tapping phones or anything like that. We need to stay a little bit further apart. Um, things like where you connect with a vendor and that vendor can now send, you know, that, that tiny umbrella card, for example. Um, Jen gets this really cool new umbrella in she can actually send that out to everybody who has her card. And she knows that those are authentic customers. Those are authentic people that engaged with, uh, with her or with you uh, during this time. So she, she knows who you are. It's not just a, another Facebook group. And you're just- That's a very good point, Jeff. You're absolutely right on. Because these are people that are part of the community. You, don't have, you cannot have people who just troll into our environment. And because there is this, this uh, authenticity when we shop and we connect, and that's what makes it very special as an application. It's not, it, nobody just comes in and just gets point for following people. That's not the way it works. Unless you were physically visible to each other, that's when the connection is made and that's when the value goes up. It makes it more rare, it makes it more exclusive, which is fun. So think about so, vendors. I mean, for me, yeah. as I engage with an yeah, artist. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good value. I, when I engage with an artist, I love to be able to to learn about new pieces that they have. Right. Uh, so I can beat Mad Maybe to the punch. He's on uh, he's on mute there. Um, but that's the that's the whole idea is that people are able to provide a level of communication that's authentically based, and that's um, so we think right. it's a great value. We think you know we're getting a lot of great feedback out of it. Um, we get feedback for people saying we'd love to see this or that, and we've got some of that stuff in the queue. Um, so yeah, definitely if you get a chance, you know, <laughs> yeah, there you go, Mad. Um, so definitely well, take a look at it, give us any feedback. If you have questions uh, or run into any issues, you've always know where I'm at every Tuesday, I'm right here. Um, and if you want to create cards, Jeff, if people wants to create, want to create cards, like you create your own cards, but we've pre-populated the app with pretty much every Tiki bar that we, around the world that we could find. So when you go look in the, on, the, on the venues and you go nearby, it will show you the Tiki bar that are not far from where you are. So there's a lot of really cool features like that. So we add them and most of them are added organically by bar owners who are adding drinks or adding bar, or bartenders who are adding themselves to it. The geolocalization as to where they are when they add or when the shaka is remembered. So that's really cool because it allows you also to, when you check up with them to know where you guys shock up. So it's a pretty cool tool, but it, it's something let us put a lot of really cool pictures on some cards. We can have call to action like we did with Co and with Tiny Umbrella. 
Um, realize that's the kind of stuff that we can help to make it more like a call to action. So it's kind of it's kind of cool to you know to to reach out if you like this. You're somebody who create artifacts or you're a bartender and you have your favorite drinks. You can and create your card as a person, as a bartender. You let us know, we certify you, and then you can create drink cards. So when people come, imagine in your when things go back to normal. You have that chakra code. You can put that chakra code on the menu, and when somebody orders a drink, they can enter that code, and that code is only available when you're at that bar. So if somebody sent the code somewhere around the world, they cannot chakra. They cannot have. They cannot claim that they had that drink unless they were at your bar, even if they enter. It's really cool. There's a lot well, of stuff you can do with it. One other thing I want to to address because I saw somebody had in the chat. Where does the the code go in the app? And what I would say, tell you is, we're not tracking any of that stuff. That's not what this is about. We're not selling your data to some big oh, no. or any of that kind of thing. This is, the code is so you can authenticate that you're right next to somebody. Right. And you see right there. So Thierry's, um, that's his code. You can enter that code right now and you're not gonna be able to get Thierry's card. No. Because you're not in proximity with him. That's, so correct. That's, that's why we do it for that authenticity. Um, it's not for anything that we're using for any purposes beyond um, what you put that code in for. So well, yeah, it's only to make sure you're next to each other. And then you have, you know, where you shot at that. That's it. That's yeah. why I was able to look at them on the map. So yeah, that's right? it's just to help you get your trail. Uh, map is in one of the new features that we've got. And I, I personally like, like that. If you're able to get a good visualization of where you've been and things that you've done. And you, if you remember, oh, yeah, there was that bar in New York. What was it again? You can you know, dial right down into it. Um, so it's pretty cool. We definitely like that. Yeah. And one of the things I'm, I keep asking the developers is on, uh, on the leaderboard, let's take all of us on the Tiki Comer team off the leaderboard because by default, we're always going to be at the top because we're out talking to everybody and doing all this stuff. So we want to get a leaderboard that... Um, in fact, that we've got somebody who the person who was number three, the woman came to me and said, man, I'm almost number one. And I said, uh, technically you are. <laughs> Remove the you first are. She is. Yeah, she is number one. <laughs> yeah. So we want to so, <laughs> love to hear your guys' feedback and input. And uh, all right. So questions, comments. I'm going to. All right. Cool. Yeah, I have one. <clears throat> okay. Shoot. So um, some, I think in one of the earlier versions, I made a typo on a drink and I couldn't delete it. Have we found out a way to delete it or correct the drink if we made a mistake? I think it was the Fugu Fugu at Seller 335. Okay, just, okay, so you send me that, send us that uh, request for a change and we can go in the back end and we'll change it automatically for everyone. But okay. uh, yeah, because it's, it's uh, because the cards are coded with it, we have a system that allows us to do that. But yeah, absolutely. So just send it to me or you go onto that uh, help me on the uh, gear and uh, just let me know what it is and, you know, uh, we'll, we'll change it right away. No problem. I don't see it in there now, but I, I, I like I said, sometimes like, like a, if it was like a my ties apostrophe S, yes, that's not the right spelling. You want to take out that apostrophe. There's really no way to go back and take out the apostrophe okay. or something stupid like that. That's all right. Okay. What was the name of it already? Go ahead. I'm um, no. I think it was the Fugu Fugu, but I don't see it in there now. I'm I'm scro I'm toggling between and I have to go in and look. How do you spell Fugu F O O? F U G U. F U G U. Yeah, let me see if it's there. Okay, it is, let me see. Uh, the Japanese blowfish that they love oh, okay. to eat. But if it's cut uh, it's yeah, I've got I've got the Fugu face off cards. That's not it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me see. Um there's two Fugu face off or two drinks that were created. Yeah, yeah, there should only be one, right? Yeah, and I've got one that has a geolocation. Let me see. So you see, this is it. That's the advantage of looking at the back end, right? So I've got the okay. owner who's a uh, Lucini. Uh, is where they're supposed to be. Yeah, Lucini. Is that the owner? Yeah, that's my name in uh, Hawaiian. But because I was testing it on an Android, and but now I deleted that, and I'm just on Apple. Okay, so I've got Atomic Annie, who's the other owner of it. That's my wife. That's your wife. Okay, so you both own, own the same drink. Okay. <laughs> but there's no apostrophe on the drink anymore. Well, I was just using it as an example, but I think oh, I had okay. misspelt it once or 
I don't remember now. No, it's it was good. over a year both ago. Of them, yeah, both look cool. Fugu face off, and uh, they both have Shaka codes. And yeah, that's uh, yours as a geolocation because it was Shaka, and your wife doesn't have a geolocation because it was not Shaka yet. And then now you remind me the the other issue was is the seller 335 is actually in a cellar in jersey city there was no wi-fi so i couldn't log into that place and then once i leave that place i can't log into that location so i don't have that in my collection uh as a venue although i should be able to okay well that's another thing so because <laughs> that's that you need to let me know we could force it in the back end so if you have a problem like that, just email it to us. Tell us where you were and give us your uh, your Chaka code. So okay. when you go on your card, uh, when you have your own card, you know what your code is, and you tell us what happened, and we'll uh, we'll we'll uh, sign it to you. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. You can fix that. You can fix that. Right. Yes. Any uh, any other stuff? So I should have had Sam. I, I apologize. I should have had you um, before we got into the Tiki Comer stuff. We should have had you. Uh, Talk about next week. And you're on mute, by the way, Sam. Hey guys, um, yes. Um, I just put the info for next week up in the chat. So uh, take a look here. It's gonna be another exciting show on September 8th. Uh, we are going to have uh, Sunshine Tiki from the Zen Tiki Lounge. So he was our very first uh, mixologist so he's coming back so we can't wait to have him and see what he's gonna be mixing up for the pour along he was our first Happy to be back <laughs> can i can i give everybody a tip something you might want to think about yeah yeah so and sam I'll, I'll send you the link but um fall is upon us thank goodness right oh, so yeah. um i am going to show you all a cocktail that requires you to spice your own rum or pick your favorite spice rum off the shelf if you're lazy I'm just saying um so i'm going to send sam you the video for my spice rum tutorial so people can actually make it ahead of time for next week if they want to just takes four days plus um i always keep it on hand um but it'll be a really tasty fall cocktail nice that's awesome awesome that's great yeah i cool. am loving that and uh who else do we have sam you said uh chris chris garland from the original we'll be having chris garland from the international tiki marketplace in garden grove and he'll be talking about what's going on there and when uh, the next event's gonna be uh, we're also going to have um the pleated peacock uh, mark thompson and uh, sarah the tiki siren and pleated peacock there's a comma between her and mark thompson right or is mark thompson now the pleated peacock <laughs> no, yeah, those are two people, Shauna Tice and Mark Thompson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shauna, I'm looking forward to having Shauna on. She is great. Um, really cool headdresses that she does. And uh, Mark Thompson, a really cool artist from the, uh, from the Midwest. Out Kim Bang's way. It's going to be fun. Yeah, so this is cool. Man, so do you guys like tonight's show? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, I'm yeah. muted, yes. <laughs> that was awesome. Lots of fun. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, this was, uh, this was, and we had a lot of good fun putting it together. And like I said, I've been talking to these guys for the last month, and I'm like, this is going to be so much fun. And there's a lot of good information here. And, and props to, uh, Guy and to, uh, Linda for the, um, uh, the Tiki kits, being able to coordinate that and, and make that happen. I know they worked really hard to, to make it happen. And, to get them shipped from uh, the big island all the way over to the mainland. Love the packaging, by the way. I, I love the, Guy, I love the packaging. It was in local newspaper from Hawaii. Yeah, That was great. really cool. Yeah. Now, I got to ask, did oh, everybody- I, I was all, it was a little, little time. Did everybody get their kit that ordered? Awesome. So cool. as far as I know, there was only one kit that one wasn't kit. delivered. It's yours? Yeah. <laughs> and but you know what if i were to pick one person to not have it be delivered to i'd pick myself because i'd, I'd want you guys to have that experience so thank you sam for um for passing along your kit so i could have the you know display and talk about it and actually enjoy the cocktail um mine's... now that we're jeff now that we're winding down i'll tell a couple stories uh -huh. right uh, how all this went so actually uh the orjat was 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 made 
I picked it up in the Foodland parking lot in Waimea <laughs> on the Big Island. That's where Clay and I met. And the meeting place was the, the statue of the cowboy out in front. See, I told you, he's dealing with crack. He's dealing in crack. That's what it is. <laughs> okay. So the day that the rum was picked up, I was, I was over at the distillery. So exactly where Steve was uh, uh, projecting from. And it was rum making day. Nice. So I was, there, I was there with the distiller and we may have had a few tastes right coming right out of the still. We just may <laughs> have. Okay, yeah, fine. So, so the, it was all, all it was um, all the adventures of putting this together. So and, and it was it very, it was well worth it to tell the stories. Yeah, so definitely appreciate you bringing all these guys to us. And it's been, uh, it, it was been fun doing it. So I'm glad you guys really liked it. And, and I wish that they had the rums all across the U.S. They'll, they'll get there. We'll help them get there. So, and where, oh, there's Amy. So, yeah, Amy, you can't send any to your family in South Dakota. <laughs> Hopefully I'm still alive when it's available in Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, hey, you know, uh, for Kale, if I come out to Indiana, I'm, I may, uh, you know, I may be bringing some of that along with me to for sale. <laughs> I'll bring deliver. Your, bring your Notre Dame tickets too. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take them. Yeah, nice. I like that. Good man. Good man. Yeah, unfortunately, I just saw that the uh, stadium's only going to be at 25% uh, capacity, and I don't yeah. fit in the 25%, so I don't know what happens to my tickets. We'll see. They got hit pretty bad with the COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So how far are you from um, uh, the Inferno Room? Uh, three miles. Okay, I really don't like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a great place. Well, um, last or last month or month before last, um, the uh, Black Acre Brewery they have a, a little garden outdoor area and they actually had their third annual tiki day and they made a couple beers and some cocktails and stuff and that was pretty cool oh nice and they had a little band playing for about an hour so i, I made it for that for about half an hour <laughs> uh, a little bit too much on the uh, tiki beers or no i just i got there late ah. gotcha i got here late today too, too because uh my my brother's girlfriend's daughter decided they wanted to get married last minute. So uh, I ended up doing a ceremony for him on the front porch. Yeah, okay, wait, you literally just married somebody right before you came on? Yep. <laughs> wow, okay. So why weren't we part of the ceremony? We would have all been, you know, <laughs> we could have been there and, you know, chat clapped and cheered. <laughs> I'll think about that next time. That's, that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, Kim, so how are you? Me? Yeah. Ah, um, I'm hoping my phone doesn't die uh, while we're doing this. Uh, fuck. I'm still traveling to all kinds of shows, just Midwest ones. I just came back from Detroit. Of course, I had to hit Max's on the way home. Um, I'll probably be at Inferno next week. Um, now there's another tiki pop-up happening in Columbus. I mean, it's not stopping. I'm, <laughs> I'm busy doing stuff out here. I am tikiing out here. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's crazy. Every time I think, oh, good, nothing else for the rest of the year. I can relax. And I come home, and all of a sudden I get an email. Hey, we're going to do a thing. You want to come? I'm like, OK, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, it sounds like the uh, lowbrow luau is on its last legs right now. I yeah, I'm probably yeah. going to cancel on that one, and I'm waiting to see if uh, they're still holding on to Arizona Tiki Oasis. But, um, oh, but it's still the Midwest. We're we're not a total, you know, shit show out here with the COVID. So we've got stuff going on, which I'm saving on gas. It's, it's nice. I mean, I've got 240,000 miles on my car. So, so the local traveling local. is, it works. 
the works. Well, I am, um, I am trying, trying to get to uh, the Chicago area and, and South Bend and, and Indianapolis, but uh, if I travel, I've got to quarantine for 14 days because I'm from starting from California. That's what they say. And they can track you on their phone or on your phone, but I don't know that they do. Oh, that's only Chicago proper though. I think uh, it's just our crazy Krampus mayor is really enforcing that. So if there's really nothing going on in Chicago. I mean, you can go and have some drinks in the Three Dots Alley uh, and you could do some takeout from Lost Lake, but they're not tiki. But you can go to Halakiki and they're not Chicago proper. So you don't have to quarantine there. Got well, and I'm I'm literally about ten minutes away from the Halakahiki if I'm staying in Chicago uh, with my sister. So that works. Perfect. I will meet you there. I may have to take you up on that. <laughs> Do it. And and Bob and Deb, is it the the Saturn? What's the tiki bar in in Oklahoma? Yeah, the, the Saturn Room in Tulsa. Saturn. Yeah, we may uh, we may make a trip here shortly. Well, if you do, make sure you get the Tiki Comer app so you can check in and let me know that you checked in. Oh, uh, I've had the app from day one. Okay, cool. And I wasn't meaning that as a commercial. Um, <laughs> when, I, when I'm in a new town, I'll stop by the bar because we have to add the geotagging uh, remotely. And so whenever I'm nearby, I go to make sure, okay, yes, it, it's there. At least, you know, that's what I tell my wife that I have to do. Um, and, and I have to try a cocktail while I'm there, you know, to get the whole experience, but yeah. Um, but no. His birthday's this weekend, so. <laughs> oh, all right. So going into Tulsa for the big birthday bash this weekend? Maybe so. Maybe. <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> well, not, well, you stay safe, man. I know Oklahoma is uh, coming back at it with uh, COVID as well. Yeah. So today we had officially we had 666 cases. So, oof, man, <laughs> it's the second time we've had that. Number. Yeah, we had the second time we've had 666. So, <laughs> yeah, that tells you something about Oklahoma. That will tell them. <laughs> so, Allie, where'd Josh go? I'm on mute because he's on the phone in the other room. <laughs> maybe he's making another um what was it a monkey ball monkey fist monkey oh yeah fist? he's working hard uh, t taking lessons on that right now <laughs> <The monkey fist. laughs> right. no he's just yapping <laughs> brenda we like your bar we noticed dorian and brenda's bar earlier and we're admiring yeah. it yeah from a different view you can see all the rum bottles yeah nice yeah. <laughs> and that's the one what's the name of your bar brenda the Cannibal's Eye. And you have mugs for the Cannibal's Eye, correct? We have mugs. We have a working volcano. Yep. Man. What's the cover to get in? <laughs> no COVID. Yeah, COVID <laughs> negative. <laughs> Come with your tests. <laughs> in, uh, Kuliana Agricole. Uh, there you go. That, actually, the Orjot. Yeah. A leader of it. <laughs> exactly. It cost you a fortune to ship it. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, yeah, we don't have anybody on. Um, so I don't know. I mean, we've had some really great syrups. Gala and mm -hmm. uh, um, Liquid Alchemist and now HCP. I mean, I, I couldn't even begin to, to say yeah. which one was better. I mean, but they're really good. Mm -hmm. Anybody leaning towards any particular one, just out of curiosity? They are all their own thing. Yeah. Well, I just have a lot of galas, that's all I know. And But now this thing, it's, oh my God, I can just drink this. Yes. But um, they're all kind of their own thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, I like Liquid Alchemist for their Orjat. I think they probably have the best Orjat. Um, Gala's got some great stuff. I, I love just about mm -hmm. everything I've gotten from her. And the macadamia, oh my gosh, yeah, that was mm -hmm. that, dreamy. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that one in. All right, well, so um, Guy, you wanted this to be an hour. We're now officially the longest show we've had in the uh, 22 weeks that we've done it. So, or maybe oh. second longest. I thought maybe we hit almost nine o'clock one night. Mm -hmm. Rich content, we could have gone longer. 
Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was trying to keep an eye on the time, but after a while, I'm like, screw it. I'm just going <laughs> to, because the content's really good and people are, are liking it, so. It was really informative with the with all with all the guests tonight. It was it was it was good. And yeah, music was, really was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad everybody liked it. Everybody had a good time. Um, oh, you are it is, I thought it was a picture there, Terry. I'm like, okay, I don't see the palm tree moving. Uh, I don't I'm at the hotel. So at this time of night all the kids are Netflix using Netflix from all the other rooms or something. And God knows what the adults are watching. So the network goes down real fast. Yeah. Well, the, the way the digitization is happening, it's almost like your max headroom at the beach. Uh, max headroom. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You remember that stuff. You throw us back to the 80s. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm dating myself. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. That was a really cool show, by the way. Honestly, very, very rich in content. It was fun. <laughs> Loved it. I think it was, it was informative. I mean, I felt like I was on Discovery Channel. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that worked out well. Yeah, well, cool. well, thanks a lot. I'm going to go see if I can make another drink with my, my liquors that I have left. Well, you're in good company. I'm not worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. All right. Thanks. Thank thanks a lot. You take care of yourselves. We will see you uh, next week. Absolutely. Don't hesitate to reach out on the app, guys. Thanks. Bye. Chat. Good night. Whoa, I Thank left. you. Oh, now I'm back. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Calabash, wherever Thank you are. You. Thank you.